This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on. Yeah. Today's boom. boom, we're on. What does that mean? I just I say, I've just started the podcast. <laughs> boom, we're on. Yeah. What does that mean? What does boom, that... we are on. Oh, yeah. okay. Boom, we're on. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. So today's guest, we've got Sadie Akan. Hi, James English. How are you? Really well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. I'm not too happy with the weather, to be fair. I've been all frazzled, but I'm all good now. Yeah, yeah. London weather. It's like Scottish weather mm. 24-7. Is it cold in Scotland as well? It's moment. actually not been too bad. We actually had a decent little summer. A decent summer for us is like three, four weeks of sun. Uh-huh. We had yeah. that. Now it's coming into winter, we believe. <laughs> okay. But psychologists. Yes. Everywhere. TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, kind of giving life advice, relationship mm. advice. For me personally, I believe everybody can have different levels of trying to make themselves happy, whether that's making money, being successful. But I believe it comes down to it the most important thing everybody tries to find a, a lifelong partner yes. I feel as if if you can find that I feel as if life becomes easier it but does. in this day and age it's become more difficult which mm-hmm. we'll get into all that I've seen all your videos very interesting <laughs> very controversial which I love I had no intention to be controversial I didn't know that common sense was so triggering mm-hmm. but apparently it is I, I feel like everybody's so triggered by what I say which I always thought was common sense but now I'm starting to realise that it's not so common so I'm guessing now yeah I'm, I'm controversial but I don't mean to be it's an accident Listen, controversy <laughs> brings views it brings numbers it, it brings attention apparently this is business, yeah so whatever you're doing it's working Praise be to God. Before we get into everything, though, I always like to go back to the start of my guests. Yeah. Get a bit of understanding about you, yeah. how you function, what you're all about, mm-hmm. where you grew up, how it all began. I, I grew up in London with my parents. I grew up um, just outside West London. And I was always just a, a, a studious good kid, really. I was just a really studious good kid. Um, very strict upbringing, Pakistani, Muslim, all of that stuff. So I was kind of, I think what one of the things that people, why it's so controversial, but I don't see it as controversial is because I grew up in London with everybody was English, but I had a Muslim upbringing. So I had to think differently to everybody around me. I was raised to think the opposite of everything I'm being taught in school and everyone I'm around. So while they would have boyfriends and while they would go out and while they would drink a bit and stuff, I was never allowed to do all of those things. So I had such a dissonance between what I've been raised as and what I'm around. So I just had to form my own opinion on everything. So I just started forming my own opinion on everything to kind of make peace of these two worlds. And then I just started studying psychology, became a psychology teacher. I did that for a long time in London and Dubai, was getting a little bit bored of it. So I decided to go into therapy instead because it was coming naturally to me anyway. I did that for a while. I didn't think anything of it, but then my mum encouraged me to start putting it online. And I only started about a year or so ago and posted a few things online and it's just now we're here. Here (laughs) What was your parents like? 
um, in terms of just upbringing very strict even now when I go back to London at my I'm a grown woman and I still have a curfew home by 10 uh, very much like what are you doing what time are you going to be home this that and the other whenever I'm with them it's their all so my dad is very strict mum is a bit easier she's a bit softer but it's still very strict and the rules are very like you know if you're going to go online which I was never really allowed to do when I was younger but as I got older they said it's fine but it's still like you can't show any skin can't talk about anything personal or anything you know provocative even though I do sometimes I'll talk about pornography and all this stuff but even then I do have to run it past them and just make sure that like they don't get offended and they don't get upset but usually they're supportive how was it in the kind of western society it's drink it's drugs it's anger it's on the streets at 12 and 13 yeah it's just it's kind of backwards thinking Mm -hmm. the Muslim side of things I think it's great I'm probably more going to side of Muslim Mm -hmm. religion for me I believe it's all a game. I, I, for me personally, I don't want to offend anyone. I feel no. as if it's a coin. I feel as if it's dividing everybody. Yeah. Too many gods, too many religions. But for the Muslim side of it, for me, I don't drink, I don't take yeah, drugs, I'm not eating bacon. I'm pretty not much a Muslim. Gambling. Yeah, so I feel as if yeah. I love those strong beliefs. Mm-hmm. You talk about your dad giving you a curfew. Yeah. I'll be doing the same with my daughter. You know, my partner can't believe I have a curfew at this age. And so he's like, How does how does your dad do it? And I think it's just it, when you have a belief in God, you kind of uh, trust authority a bit as well. Because you trust that they if it's in line with what your beliefs are, you assume it's for your own interest. But one thing I would say about having religion uh, and growing up with religion all of the rules that are dictated in the testaments or in the Quran or whatever it is they're good for your soul they're really good for you as being a psychologist and I think doctors come across this as well everything that's forbidden in religion is actually counterproductive for your mental health anyway we're not allowed to drink we're not allowed gambling not allowed lots like casual sex or anything like that but that's all constructive to your mental health so I in the process of becoming a psychologist it made me more religious it made me realize why God is so strict because he knows if you stray from these rules you will suffer in the form of either mental health or or physical um, unhealth did you see see when you've seen other people at school and stuff did you see the destruction it was causing or Mm -hmm. Did you feel as if you were missing something? I was lucky in the sense that I never, I never craved the things I was. I was quite lucky that I didn't crave it because I thought it was sinful. So because I thought it was sinful, I never craved it. I felt less isolated. I felt left out. But I couldn't understand um, how sex would be enjoyable when you're so young. It just sounds so painful, and I couldn't understand uh, how you know. Like I, I've never tried alcohol, but when I see adults become all a bit like disorientated, I just wonder how does a twelve year old cope with that so I just wonder like how do they function when they're exposed to so much pleasure so young I, I always wonder what that does to them but they all mellow it out I'm not saying it's a bad thing I've noticed that they all mellow out and they're fine they experiment but it was just scary to me as an adult I think it does I think it makes you psychotic it I was did. watching porn from probably 9 10 yeah. I used to get a free view channel and at 12 at night and it's it's crazy how you get and into that drinking from 12 on a Friday, Saturday night and mm-hmm. and now I look at the friends who I grew up with who are doing that stuff not many of them are here yeah it's good they took it too far yeah and yeah. I don't know when to stop because they're craving that external stuff consistently and yeah. it burns out the brain it burns out mentally, physically or spiritually or whatever yeah. it is I just I don't understand why we're so messed up but then when you look at those sort of things you can kind of see why people struggle yeah because doing that for 10 20 30 years and then people say they're going to change yeah change is a fucking lifetime improvement it's, <laughs> mm. a, it's a consistency of every day trying to strive yeah to be better and a lot of people try and change they'll do it for a week two weeks but if you've been doing that negative stuff for so long mm. you're going to burn out you don't like growing up exposed to all of that what is what do you think is the most dangerous thing do you think it's porn alcohol or sex I think if you open the door to one, I think they all come flooding in. Yeah, all of them pretty much. Yeah, I they think they're all on the same level. Go on the you same. can have a sex addiction, gambling addiction, alcohol addiction. Any addiction for me is all the same, whether it's overeating, yeah. undereating, exercise. Yeah, you can have health healthy obsessions, I believe, but the best addiction probably to have is probably fitness. I yeah. believe with it's the probably, natural chemicals and yeah. whether it's yoga or something, yeah. you can have a natural addiction of mm-hmm. a beautiful life with mm. being consistent so with something. But if it's a negative alcohol, eating, gambling, sex, it's yeah. so bad. And if you go down, really look into it, you look at the sexual energy exchange, you look at the soul ties, yeah. it's powerful stuff. It is powerful. People used to call me crazy, but I feel as if the more I speak about it, the more 
people look into it and then kind of understand it and go, yeah. well, wait a minute, if he's doing all that, because it's scary yeah. to say, this isn't normal. I used to sit around in pubs and at parties and I think, all these motherfuckers are crazy. <laughs> but I was crazy, I just knew that it wasn't right. I never had the strength to yeah. admit it wasn't right. But it's so hard for you guys because I was, I'm was i Muslim. I grew up and I still went to work with everybody that was British and they would go and drink and get really, yeah. really drunk. And uh, they would leave me alone because I'm Muslim. They would never put pressure on me. But if somebody else, especially if they're white and said, oh, I'm not drinking tonight, everyone like, don't be boring, don't be ridiculous. You didn't have a choice. You yeah, had pressure. to. So much pressure. So I used to wonder, like, how do they cope with that? Like, they is there a way to just step out of that zone or do you have to get involved? No, you get involved. You have to get involved, No right? one's strong enough because we feel as if it's, so it's a hard. sense of bullying. Mm. But I was never the one to get pressured. I was the one pressuring. Oh, you were that guy. I was a leader. Right. Where <laughs> if you're in my company, we're all getting fucked up. <laughs> and that's where... Yeah. And it's crazy because I used to think that was cool. Yeah. I used to think the loudest man, he's cool, he's crazy, he doesn't really care. Yeah. But that's the ones who do care. That's the yeah. ones who are the most broken. Yeah. And, it, and now I can walk into a place and I know who's struggling. Yeah. I see it. I feel it. I don't know. I talk about energies and vibes yeah. and I just feel you ain't in a good place. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. I don't want to hurt anybody. But if somebody comes to me, I'm very, people gravitate towards me to tell me their problems. Yeah. And Does it come natural to you? I think so now. Yeah, yeah. Because I believe I'm in a better frequency of vibration or whatever yeah. people call it. I feel as if I can help people more, but I'm still a work in progress myself. And in all your healing and stuff, what's been your most powerful, like, realisation? Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Yeah, nobody knows. Nope. I've yeah. interviewed homeless men to billionaires. I'm in a good place myself and nobody's ever got it figured out. Yeah, nobody's got it figured out. No yeah. one. No matter how much money or how much success is no. there. I've seen people with nothing who are happier than people who have got millions. So yeah. I feel as if we can be chasing the wrong thing. Yeah. But for me, nobody's got it figured out. Yeah. I thought stopping drinking. When I started making all the changes, I felt amazing. Right. But now it's become, I wouldn't say boring. It's, I, I don't want to get peace and boring mixed up. It's yeah. the same. But... What the fuck is it all for? What, what, where do you find your happiness now? With the family. But yeah. even then, they're fucking doing my head in. <laughs> so it's like a I contradiction. Know, my me, yeah. I think, man, I love my kids, but fuck me, you're <laughs> doing my head in. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. They're getting harder, yeah. Yeah, so, but like I say, it's to find the balance, but I don't know. I yeah. just feel as if nobody has it figured out. You that's can talk true. a good game, I can talk a yeah, good game. True. Like we spoke earlier, I feel as if social media is a mental health it's like a big mental health world. Yeah. James was saying how like anybody on social media has some level of mental health problems because nobody would sign up to this level of scrutiny if you weren't already traumatized some way, shape or form. I agree. I agree. I would say it for myself as well. I just have, I feel like I had very productive trauma that kind of forced me to have very thick skin. Um, not trauma as in like anything extreme, but just like very harsh parenting and very harsh relationship with siblings and stuff so it was very it's very effortless for me to receive so much hate it does nothing it doesn't penetrate in any way shape or form if anything I get uncomfortable when people give me so many compliments and that's where the imposter syndrome uh, kicks in because I just don't understand where I'm getting all these compliments from but when you give me hate that's my comfort zone which is why I have no problem saying what I need to say in order to establish truth why did you get into psychology I think it was my own issues. I couldn't understand why I was so insecure. I, I was, I had nothing to be insecure about. Like, praise be to God, I was healthy. I had my family and I was so deeply insecure. And then I think I was just trying to figure myself out. And in the process of trying to figure myself out, I ended up figuring out a lot of women because we all suffer from the same pathologies, which is those insecurities in relationships. So I think in the process of self-discovery, I managed to create a career, but it was genuinely trying to figure out why I'm so crazy. How long did it take you to figure that out? Uh, I think you get tested in your first relationship. I think you don't realize you're crazy. A lot of people think that they're so secure and so confident. And they're like, I'm great. I love myself. I'm so great. But the moment they fall in love, all of their anxieties are brought to the forefront. And I think that's what happens. I think the moment you fall in love, you realize that everything that you thought you had you know, figured out, you're now nervous or anxious or distant or pulling away. You're doing things that aren't constructive to the relationship and you don't know why. And I think that's when it, the penny drops for a lot of people. Why is that? So when I'm single, my life goes amazing. Yeah. You see that I'm in great shape. You see I'm calm. Yeah. You see I have no worries. As soon as I'm in a relationship, 
the vulnerability kicks in. Yeah. I was very good at cutting people off after three months. Yeah. I actually get past three months, like last year, well, a few months ago. <laughs> um, it felt good. I felt as if I broke down some barriers. But the thing about going into a relationship, mm -hmm. it brings up a lot of unwanted trauma that you've never yeah. dealt with. Yeah. We can put it to the side. We can not talk about it. And we feel as if we're great. A single, mm -hmm. everything's going great. And yeah. I'm ready for a relationship. As soon as you're in that relationship again, yeah. if you've not healed, you're fucked. And so how long can you last now in a relationship? Well, I lasted a year there. Oh, well done. <laughs> but I feel as if I learned a lot again. And what is a common reason your relationships end? I ended all, everyone first. After yeah. three months, the, the fear of being abandoned, the fear mm. of rejection, the fear of not feeling good enough. Yeah. I still feel that. Yeah. No matter how. So what, will, will you become distant or will you get clingy? This episode is sponsored by Fire Away Pizza. The fastest growing pizza company in the UK with over 150 stores. With their fresh quality ingredients and unique pizzas, they will have you coming back for more. Use code JAMES20 for 20% off. That's JAMES20 for 20% off. I can be both. Yeah. I love the obsession. I love mm. the craziness. Give me that mad love. Yeah. Give me that, I'll do anything for you. But then what happens is I feel as if that fizzles as well because yeah. nothing lasts forever. Yeah. Relationships, you could be 20 stone, your girlfriend could be 15 stone, you could, it could be perfect, you've mm. eaten a lot. But if one starts exercising and going to the gym, that energy doesn't match anymore. Yeah. Well, people who have been traumatized, what happens, at, like particularly with men, is the moment it gets too intimate and it's no longer like butterflies, but it's now actual intimacy and connection, they start to find the flaws in their partner just to pull away. So they'll get everything's going well. But as they start to get more committed, they start to find the flaws and get more critical and then abandon their partner before their partner can abandon them. And only when the partner's gone and there's become an ex, then you glorify them and be like, oh, I miss them so much blah blah but really at the moment you wanted you felt suffocated so a lot of men go through that kind of separating quickly abandoning them quickly do you want to fix that yeah, you've yeah. Got to do it. <laughs> it's hard to fix it's one of those things it's a natural instinct you almost even sexually you start desiring them less because you're getting too close to them whereas a one night stand person you can have all the energy but it was somebody you actually love and care about you start to desire them less and less it's a way of detaching yourself before you get too close yeah, what I've realised is, is communication is key for me. Yeah. I wear my heart on my sleeve as well. When I love fucking hard, yeah. sometimes that's a, that can be a downfall, but... What, what do you think you'd need your woman to understand if she was to try and love you? I'm, very com I'm a very complicated man. Mm -hmm. I come with a lot of baggage as well, mm -hmm. but I also come with a lot of boundaries. Okay. I know what I bring to the table. But is it boundaries or self-sabotage? There's a could be spine both. line. It could be both. Yeah, because boundaries is what we put up to kind of teach people how to love us. Like a boundary might be, um, I don't like to eat. As simple as I don't eat on uh, while watching TV. It's teaching people how to love you. Whereas self-sabotage is not telling them anything, watching them. And as soon as they do something wrong, you get rid of them. Could be both. Yeah. I just feel as if with relationships in this day and age, social media is and everybody craving attention. Mm. I feel as if it's slipping. I feel as if it's hard to connect, especially not drinking either. Yeah. Everybody plays a good game for three months. Yeah. The mask slips. Yeah. Everybody's full of shit. <laughs> and then you tend to see, and, I, and I'm very f good at reading people. It's, it's harder because I think, unfortunately, healthy people, the people that are actually good at relationships, they disappear. They get married by the time they're 28, 29 years old. So the pool of people that are left as you get older tend to be people who are a little bit less able and less able to have the skills that you need for a long-lasting relationship. What do you think marriage is? It's a, a commitment and duty to the bond you've uh, assigned by God or by law or whatever it is. But it's a commitment and duty to the assignment of being connected to each other, not necessarily to the person itself, which is kind of different to what most people would say. It'd be being in love forever. For me, I don't really see, or I, especially in my belief system, it's not just about being in love with the person forever. It's about having a duty towards the connection that you created in the home that you created forever, if you can. You talk about relationships where you never... Your first relationship was never arranged marriage. It was. Yeah, and my uh, parents used to introduce us all the time when we were young. How does that work? Uh, they introduce you they to somebody's family. They come over to your house. You kind of talk, get to know each other a little bit. And then it's kind of like, you know, your dad will supervise while you kind of talk to each other. And then you might talk outside of the relationship. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, uh, no worries. 
So. But I do agree. With, at the time, I used to resist it. I'm like, this is so embarrassing. Why am I having to do this? Blah, blah, blah. But now looking back, I think it's actually a really good idea. Because they left me to my own devices. And now I, you don't want to leave me to my own devices. Trust me, I'm a car wreck. But when they were in charge, it was actually quite good. Because they choose people from a similar um, background to yourself. What happens is parents will always select somebody that they have similarities to. And what happens when two people get together, if they've got similar upbringing, they'll be somewhat compatible. Even if they're like across the world, they'll have somewhat compatible. Whereas two completely different upbringings, it makes it harder to connect. Only because one might be really traumatized, one might be really secure, one might have a different set of morals and values. And when the love fizzles, the values are the only thing that keep you connected. And that's why I think arranged marriages tend to work. Yeah, but that's the I should fucking put down. <laughs> no. So were you married? No, before? but they introduced, yeah. So when did you start looking into yourself when you the insecurities? When did you start going deep? I think it was when a case I would, I would have really good, like nice, good people always around me, and I would have nothing, no, no connection to anybody. And I just found it so easy to just stay away from everybody and anybody. I would just not feel like anything inside me. I don't know. I don't. And I knew on paper this person's perfect, and I know on paper I want to just settle down and do all of that. That's all I want in life. But there was a disconnect, and then. It made me realize that there's something in me that's not accepting love what's going on and i tried to dig and i think it's just low self-esteem it was at the time how did you work on that um I'm, it's still work in process it's still it's still always there but i think with low self-esteem what happens with low self-esteem is you go on to do self-sabotaging behaviors i feel low so now i'm just going to eat loads of shit or i'm going to drink loads of alcohol or i'm just going to go have frivolous sex so what happens with the low self-esteem you end up doing bad decisions and those bad decisions make your life worse so i think what i had to do is just make sure i don't do any bad decisions just because i'm feeling shit still make good decisions regardless of how you feel What's it all about? As in? Relationships. What I, is it all about? I, it's, in it, your own opinion. Because might, we all see it differently. People are happy, single people are happy, married people are happy. Mm. Different girls are different men every night. People are happy making pornos. People are happy doing OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is it about? I think if you can find somebody that you create a shared meaning and purpose with, whether that's through working together, whether that's through children, whether it's through family, whether it's through some shared meaning and purpose together, that is an important meaning and purpose to both of you, then you can find that's the purpose of the relationship. If you can't find that between the two of you, you'll drift apart eventually. So I just think it's something along this line. I know that's a bit of a not very sexy answer, but unfortunately, I think that's what it is. Why do you think a lot of relationships and marriages are breaking down now more than ever? Values. People are valuing such stupid shit when it comes to relationships. So we're valuing a lot of like external things like money, looks, anything that outside of a person's actual being is what we're starting to value. We're not valuing anybody's actual nature or the things that bring you genuine happiness and closeness. We're not valuing that anymore. So when that external factor fades, the connection fades and then the marriage disappears. It's scary times, I think, for yeah. people. I feel as if... I think there's, a lot of people think the world's overpopulated, but it's actually not. It's no. The numbers are going down. Mm. And also the homosexuality is another cause of why uh, relationships are less and less. Big. And I, I attribute a lot of it to pornography. But I think just the spoil, being spoiled for choice in general just makes it harder to find one person and stick to that forever. How damaging is porn for men and female, but it's the majority of men who watch it? I don't think it, it, there's anything more damaging in society at the moment than pornography and the ease of access of pornography. The amount of 28-year-old, 29-year-old men that come to me because they have impotency, they literally can't get an erection. I had a client recently, and she's a stunning OnlyFans model, only 22 years old or whatever it is, and her partner can't can't climax and uh, because he, he's addicted to pornography and she's somebody who has millions of guys on a daily basis climaxing on her picture but her partner can't because he's been so addicted to porn so unfortunately what porn does is it creates a category of men that are unable to perform in the real world they can't perform and they think they can they think they've got all these skills and tools because they're so cool and they watch all this but there is nothing more unsexy to a woman than a man 
man who watches a lot of pornography. There's nothing more dissatisfying. Every woman I've spoken to that has dealt with a man that watches a lot of pornography, she says it's the worst intimate experience she's ever had because it literally creates a robot in, out of a man. It makes a man think he has to reenact these skills that he's learned. Plus, he can't climax because he's been overstimulated. Plus, he doesn't know what intimacy and connection looks like. He has no clue how to make love, and which is what women are always seeking. So having sex with a man that's addicted to pornography is any woman's worst nightmare. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I, I know many people now. I've interviewed enough people with, who do only fans, male and female, mm. and make porn. I would never have my kids doing it. I wouldn't want my kids doing it. Yep. I would never go with anybody who done it. But it's each to their own. They're doing their thing, and the thing what is it's a it's high demand. People are paying for it. The men are paying for it, so yeah. they wouldn't do it. If people never watched it, they wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And men, they say, what is it, one third of virgins now? And people are looking for communication. They're looking to feel as if they're part of something. They've got a girlfriend. Yeah. And they're milking them for it. Yeah. And I think one thing that's underspoken about is like the actual relationships that OnlyFans girls have. I have a lot of clients that are OnlyFans girls. And one thing they'll find is when you, when you do OnlyFans as a woman, the type of man you attract is a man that's addicted to pornography. The average man who's traditional, doesn't watch a lot of porn, has like kind of is still a bit old school, won't be long term relationship with an OnlyFans girl. The only guy that's so into that and would be so interested is a guy who's also grown up and pornography and he's normalized women that are so hypersexual so she ends up with a man who is not very masculine he can't climax he he wants more and more he needs threesomes he, so her insecurities go through the roof she's online getting people are paying for her when her own boyfriend she can walk around naked in front of him he doesn't even show a reaction so she actually comes out of it very very depressed from from what her boyfriend's like like I've interviewed porn stars in their forties and mm -hmm. their fifties, and you can see the damage. Yeah, you can see it in their, their eyes, their soul, or whatever it is. You can see that with the their presence, and they're fucking great people. I'm not here yeah. to shoot them down. It's not what I do. But I interview a young girl who's only fans, and she says she'll do it five years, ten years. But it's why do you find it so hard for them to get out once they're in it? It's an unbelievable amount of money for a lot of them. Uh, a lot of them, not all of them, but for a lot of them. Also, the the man that they're with is usually a pimp. And what I mean by that is he's a pseudo pimp in the sense that the girls I know that have an OnlyFans, their man can't keep up with the money that they make. Just can't. He can't make 50 grand a month. He just can't do it. So what ends up happening is he becomes a bit of a bum. Yeah, he becomes like less and less motivated and he disrespects her money. He'll use her money to pay for the rent. Her money gets paid for the holidays. Her money, her money, her money. So what happens is she starts to think that if she lets go of the money, she'll lose this man. So she ends up being stuck with this loser of a guy as well. So I think there's a lot of holding on to the relationship if they're in that situation. There's a lot of financial insecurity that they grew up with and they don't want to go back to. They probably grew up with nothing. And there's also a lot of social validation that comes from OnlyFans that they haven't worked out. So a lot of trauma. I think instead of insulting every girl that does OnlyFans and calling her names, why don't we try and understand what kind of led there? Because chances are it wasn't an easy path. Oh, I see when I get there when we yeah. get fans. I, I, I like I say, they're friends of mine. I love them to bits. I wish them nothing but the best. Of course. I just know the damage it will cause for their kids when they're older. And they, they know that. But if you're making 100 bags a month, 200. It's hard to turn it's down. It's so hard to turn down. Yeah. But it's the destruction of the shit that's happening internally. Yeah. But when I post clips of these people, the men the hatred, the rage, and I'm thinking, but it's there, just perverts yeah, that are Yeah, it's always the ones that are the most critical yeah. with the fake profile and the, you know, regurgitated quotes from Red Pill content, the ones that are paying. And if you look at the, <laughs> if you look at the guys that pay for it, it's usually men on the spectrum. It's the autistic man. It's the man that can't get, it's, it, here's the problem with the guys that pay for OnlyFans. They're usually men who are super not looking after themselves. They, they can't get women in the real world. So, but they don't want to face the rejection. So what they'll do is go to OnlyFans and feel like they're getting that connection. But when they go into the real world, the women that are on their rural level, uh, they're not attracted to. So they think, fuck that. Why is a five out of 10 ignoring me when I can just pay for a 10 out of 10 to give me a message? So they end up not working on themselves. You need rejection. As a man, you need to go into the real world, get a woman who tells you, no, don't, you don't like this about you, don't like that about you, and you work on yourself. But having OnlyFans and pornography means I can stay this miserable, unattractive, attractive man and no one can tell me no this is perfect so they end up just staying the way they are what do you think the key to life is 
the key to life, I know it sounds like a bit played out, but it's usually just connections. If you can form healthy, long lasting connections with friends, family and partners and children, you live a very purposeful life. Everything else is meaningless, but those are the only things that will actually matter to your mental and physical health. How important is it to stay a couple for your kids? Very unfortunately. And a lot of people will say, no, if you're not in love, uh, you shouldn't stay together, blah, blah. I think if you can't co-parent and can't be like, if you literally can't stand each other, fair enough, you should separate. And if you're going to be violent and you're verbally abusive, separate. But if you can exist with each other, but you're just not madly in love, you can create that love. You can create that intimacy again. People stop working on it, but you can recreate it. If you're going to be married for 40 years, there might be two, three, five years where you don't love each other, but you can go re regroup. You're always going to fall out of love, but if you can regroup, try and regroup. See, as soon as I fall out, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm out of there. Yeah. And that's where something that maybe I need to work on, I just feel as if... As soon as you fall out of love, you're gone. I feel as if it's gone. I feel as if if you love somebody, you should always love them. Well, that's the thing is, it, uh, love is a feeling and feelings go up and down. Yeah. Uh, but what happens is when people are traumatized, they become impatient. They think if the feeling is gone, it's never going to come back, usually because they had a parent that left and never came back. And then so they think when love goes, mm. it never comes back. But the stats for single parents, single moms or single dads raising kids, the stats of addiction and yeah, Strip, prison time. Stripping, prison, yeah, homelessness. everything. It's so high. I know, and single moms don't like that conversation. They love to just say, well, my kid is fine. My kid got an A star mm. in school. But it's like, that in itself is a narcissistic mother. The fact that you think that the child doesn't need a father in itself is what makes you a narcissistic mother. If A mother that gets it, like, look, I'm, I know we, I, we didn't work and I'm so sorry, but how do I protect this child from the trauma of not having a dad? That's a good single mother. But the mom that denies, denies, denies no he he was a prick I, oh he's not seeing the kids blah blah that in itself is a mother that shouldn't have children how long do you think people should wait before having sex um it's difficult to say to each their own obviously i've got religious reasons for why i might think differently but what i would say in general to everybody is never ever accelerate physical intimacy more than psychological intimacy if you are psychologically comfortable with somebody and psychologically can explain what your terms and conditions are and what you like and what you don't like then you're ready for a physical intimacy but if you're more comfortable telling them what you like in bed but you can't tell them what time you want to speak to them the next day and what time you want to see them why are you having sex with them i feel as if people should be waiting longer yeah to see who their person is to see I feel as if the mask always slips on people. Mm. People always portray the image. You, I've done you, it for many years you myself. You went celibate for a long time, 18 right? months. And then, you know, when you went back into the dating pool and stuff, was it like you went too fast or did you wait? Like, how did you, how did you come too out? Too fast. Yeah. <laughs> as a man, it should be, that was my method of thinking. Yeah. And I actually felt so down after it. Mm, okay. Felt drained. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a, you see boxers who, yeah will not do fuck all and for eight weeks ten weeks and mm. there's a different sort of energy i don't like i say there's no manual how we should be living life i'm yeah. only speaking through experience and i've got a lot of experience for many different things to understand life understand mm. the patterns understand what makes me function i don't want to bullshit people yeah i want to try and lead people to a positive more healthier life constructive yeah. and the most important thing is to try and find some purpose yeah a lot of kids are struggling purpose to, to focus all their energy on to football teams working 95 mm. and that's okay and i always say this but the most alpha thing you can do is look after your family Absolutely. everything i do is for my kids my kids need me yeah. most crucial ages 12 and 13 yeah you you need anything from me i'm there i'm strict as fuck as well mm. i'm also you want to feel around and have a laugh at, that's what i'm all about yeah. but i know when i started slam i had a football career and i, I just loved drinking i loved the mm -hmm. nightlife i fucking love women i just i loved that i yeah. felt alive i felt free Mm. and obviously the more you do it the more destructive I become and you yeah. can see the darkness and sadness and then what made me. you think no I'm going to stop I read The Power of Now The uh, Power Cato, of Now read that I always knew gambling what am I doing my uncles were bad gamblers and I've I seen the patterns mm. I've seen them all I've seen the visions that wait a minute and then I read that book came sober for two years The Just Power of Now Power of Now what was it Cato. in the book that was so life changing it was about living in the present moment oh, wow. I realised I was living in the past oh, I realised I was stuck there yeah mm. it was 
you live in the past, it brings fear, anxiety, depression and guilt. Mm. The brain can't multitask, so right. it's to try and come to the present moment. Right. Wait a minute, I can still have a better future, so how do I do that? Right. Live in the moment, forget the past, it's done, it's gone, you yeah. can't relive it. But I just kept reliving the pain of my dad seeing his son a fuck up before he died and mm. kids to different women and prison and drunk and drugs and gambling and sex and I genuinely thought I was a fucking man mm. but yeah looking back I was the weak I was a weak link I was yeah. scared fucking little boy and part of me still scared if I'm not doing it right part of me still feel vulnerable part of me still feels like I'm in, I'm a fraud part of me still feels I don't deserve the life I've got because sometimes the old James can slip in right. the positives so a negative can kick in and right. it can ruin the full day and I think fuck I'm not a good guy and that scares me. No, it's not that you're not. Here, here's the thing. It's not about being a good guy or not a good guy. With men, you just have to decide, are you going to be a problem solver or a problem creator? That's all you have to do. And what I mean by that is if you've got a life full of problems, that as a man, you have a choice of either going to denial and just seek highs. So if I've got money problems, I'll go gamble. Or I can choose a way to solve this problem that doesn't involve any highs because highs usually create new problems. So if I'm feeling lonely, a lot of guys will be like, I'm feeling lonely. Let me go get an escort. That's a high. It's a high of saving a problem. Whereas if he says, I'm feeling lonely, let me work on myself so I can create an intimate connection. He becomes a problem solver. So as a man, all you have to do is look at the problems in your life and become a problem solver, not a high seeker. And eventually you'll live a more smooth life. What makes you happy? Um, connections, I would say. I love kids. Uh, I love like spending time with people I love. And that is when I'm my happiest. I could easily drop all of this social media nonsense. It means nothing to me. I, I have friends that like invest in teams and like buy followers and like blue ticks and all this stuff. And I and have like a marketing campaign and this, that, and the other. And I just think this is all nonsense to me. It means nothing to me. It, I'm, and I feel really bad even saying this, but it even means not, not that much when people say, you've changed my life with your things and I'm like that's so sweet but it just doesn't do much for me the only thing that does much for me is being home with the people I love and that's the only thing that does anything for me when I'm deprived of that I'm a, I'm quite a negative person when I'm filled with that everything feels better so I think that's my baseline why do you do it then I do because it's so effortless for me it's so easy for me and it's uh, yet so impactful on everybody else. I say a few words that I make up on the spot sometimes and they're like, that changed my life. And I'm like, really? What was going on in your life if that changed it? So it's effortless and impactful. And if it required any more effort, I probably wouldn't do it. And if it was any less impactful, I wouldn't do it. But that combination of effortless and impactful for somebody as lazy as me is perfect job. Why do you think human beings are so easy manipulated? Uh, because they don't have God. And I know that sounds like really stupid, but here's what it is. When you have a sense of God, what it does is it gives you stationary values for the rest of your life. I would not agree with you know certain things even if you do them or not like well, you know wearing certain clothes or uh, even like i'm not covering i still think it's a sin even though i do it sex uh, random sex um homosexuality this and the other i will never change my opinion doesn't mean i hate anyone that does it but i'll never change my opinion a sin is a sin uh, what's right is right what's wrong is wrong i myself am a sinner but i recognize what's right and wrong so therefore nothing can shake me nothing can really manipulate me because i've got those set of stationary values when people don't have a set of stationary values what happens is anyone and everyone can shake them because they're fragile the law can tell you to you tomorrow that a 44 year old man is now a woman and you have to share the bathroom store with him and you have to say yes because you don't have a set of values. Whereas if you grew up with a set of values, you'd be like, well, I don't actually agree with that because it goes against what I was raised as. You stand up against manipulation. Look at lockdown. The whole <laughs> world we're in a lockdown. Insanity. And then they made you feel like you were crazy if you thought against it. Were you? Uh, were nah, you? I was up mountains and shit. But then people would say, you're and killing then, my gran. And and I and I thought, like, fuck your gran. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck her, she's gone. She's going to be dead anyway. Honestly. No, but I was, do, I was I miles could. away up holes doing cold water yeah, therapy. Same. I actually believe that kicked me on in life. Yeah. Because I, 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 but I did, I, I'm a man who likes to cover all angles. I do like to question everything. Yeah. I thought, could I be to, in danger? And, could I be mm. hurting people and potentially being at a risk? And I started reading the facts. Wait a minute, this is 99.9%. Nonsense survival rate Nonsense. I'm a fit young man I just climbing mountains I did get a stick for it 
I think a lot of people's kind of came round now, but it scares me how fast people are controlled. I, you know, it made me realise how Hitler did what he did. Yeah. All these years, I used to think, how on earth could Hitler just make a whole country think like this? But when you watch yeah. lockdown and how pathetic pathetic people were with how glorified they thought they their morals were because they wear a mask and they sanitize and they thought they were better than everybody and i just thought you're the dumbest person in the world but it re made me realize you can manipulate people so quickly and easier i started hating people in lockdown yeah. i was like i can't believe people are this dumb and then when we came out of it they've never really come out and said oh god i was stupid they kind of so it just shows me who's so easily manipulated in society which is most of them because TV's program and yeah, do you watch reason? a lot of TV? No, no, I no, don't. Uh, no. I do watch Netflix and stuff. No. I don't watch any Netflix no. or series or anything. I've never been able. My, mine is more because of my ADHD. But you don't watch it for any reason. No, if somebody says it's a good program, I just kind of I feel as if it dumbs me down. Yeah, I feel as if I, I'm too busy. I'm too productive. To I'll occasionally read a book. If I'm honest, that I was in about books when I was going through changes. But now I'm just all about learning from others, so learning how, from me. So what do you watch? If you do, you watch your own podcast. What do you watch? I watch it for clips and that's it. But I do yeah. cringe at my yeah, own voice. Yeah, me too. I yeah. Cringe, I I Sometimes I think, anymore. you know what? You look good. And you speak sense, and then yeah. the other psychotic side comes out, and I yeah. think you're just a narcissistic wanker. What's been like? You know, watching yourself on social media and stuff. What is? What have you started to like more about yourself or hate more about yourself? I probably came. I probably. I don't actually post that much content about myself. Mm. It's mostly others. Um, sometimes I don't know it's like I kind of cringe because why do I need gratification mm. why do I need to post about retiring my mum why do I need to post about being mm. four years five years sober yeah. it's like tell me how well I'm doing am yeah. I doing the right decision Yeah. people say you're changing my life but does one post change somebody's life yeah. it maybe makes them think differently for a couple of hours and then they're straight back into old habits yeah. but I don't know man I just feel as if I'll probably be off all social media by the end of the year do you think so? What yeah. will you do instead? I just actually bought a new phone with no apps on it. Okay. What What do you think you'll do instead? Other people will do it for me. I okay. just feel as if it doesn't, I don't f benefit from it anymore. Right. I don't think it, I feel, I want to think different from everybody else. I want mm. to do things that I feel as if hold people back. Right. I want to be the guinea pig for a happier life. Okay. I don't have all the answers. I've eliminated a lot of negatives, but I've still got a lot to master. Mm -hmm. The eating and the sugar is the last one. Yeah, Social media is well. kind of, I feel as if I can come off social media at any time. Yeah, it doesn't bother you. But too. I feel as if sometimes I'm missing something. I've done a six week change kind of documentary. When I came off all the social medias the first day, I thought, well, somebody dies and I signed back in straight away. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of, it's one of those things. It's hard to disconnect yeah, from it. Yeah, it's very hard. But you know, as a podcast host, do you guys get much hate as much as the guests do or not really? Not much. Yeah, you people, guys must not. It's a nice end of the deal. Yeah, I feel as if people are there to tell their story. Yeah. Some guests, people really go off their nut. But mm. I've interviewed so many controversial people that yeah. it's water off a duck's back. You don't come this far. Yeah. We're not having some sort of backbone. Okay. Like we spoke earlier, I would interview anybody. Yeah. If I thought it was a good story, I would never interview a, a sex case. Um, I've interviewed people with allegations and other things yeah. hanging over their head. I feel as if every man deserves a voice. I feel as if people who make false allegations should be sent to prison. Mm -hmm. I feel as if allegations are then destroying lives when a lot of them are false. Listen, a lot of the sexual crimes are from men. Yeah, We get it. But the majority of the, the false allegations are from women. Yeah. So there's got to be some sort of balance. I believe men should be protected more. I feel as yeah. if men, a lot of people get thrown under the bus maybe because they're speaking out about certain things. Well, wait yeah. a minute, we'll create a story and fuck him over. Yeah. I don't have all the answers. I've spoke to a kid, a footballer there. I wasn't a judge or a dude. I'm just yeah. there to let things tell him from his side it's hard because i don't know with that stuff i really don't know i don't know if it's a case of you know when celebrities come out and there's been a sex allegation against them i don't know if it's one out of hundreds that finally went out there and then got proven false or was it just a lie from scratch because one thing i noticed in my experience of just knowing people and stuff sometimes there is a lot of girls that have been assaulted but never said anything but it's that one the one that does go out and say something is usually the one with bad intentions because the, the real it, victims tend to have too much shame to say anything so usually the ones that do come out and say something they tend to be a bad representation of yeah. victims but it's such a it's such a fragile topic yeah you look at the johnny depp case as well yeah that was a How terrible yeah so that was 
it happens and there's many survivors Especially, who don't come forward yeah. who don't really because they're ashamed and they, yeah. I've interviewed many survivors who blame themselves yeah. so I understand that my this, job is not to stop people from coming forward yeah. but my job is to give people a fair voice yeah. and people can make their own assumptions yeah. so like I says the majority of sexual crimes are from male yeah. but the majority of false allegations are from female yeah. so it's, it's scary it is, it's and a, a single allegation can destroy someone's yeah. life and it's, it's innocent to proven guilty but now uh, this day and age now it's you're guilty if you're yeah and then what what do you think about like when there's been physical abuse and there's evidence and then they get back together and stuff like that or, I feel, I feel what as do if, you think about those I feel cases as if that's a weak link i feel as if if a man cheats yeah he doesn't love you and i feel as if you don't t if you i feel as if if a man cheats he doesn't love you but if you take him back you don't love yourself i feel yeah. as if both are losers yeah in my own opinion i feel as if the abusive relationships the kind of the controlling because i'm a control freak yeah i like to lead down by the front i feel as if i'm the leader mm -hmm. and that, that's difficult for me to give the reins to anybody yeah the only person who's really got that is my daughter that's the only girl yeah. to ever have me wrapped around <laughs> her finger yeah and it's probably the only girl if i'm honest yeah. but I feel as if the, the abusive relationships, it stems from a lot of things, yeah. from the broken homes, from bad mm. decisions. And you tend to see people come back to that. They just don't love themselves. But then yeah, again, it's but the, I the also Stockholm worry syndrome about, and stuff. Yeah, I also worry about the man that is abusive. There's so much support for victims of abuse, which there should be, and even more so. But the man that hits also doesn't want to be this man. There's no way you could actually want to be this kind of violent, aggressive, horrible human being. But there's not much support for them. If they were to try and go for therapy or try and do anything or even look online, there's not really much. And that comes from some kind of trauma. So I think that, it, that is something that we need to actually, instead of just shaming everybody how do we help the person who's abusive because that is a terrible thing to be as a man uh, who hits women that must be that must feel awful about that what do you think about people who say well if a woman hits a man she, he should hit her back and stuff I, feel, I was attacked in McDonald's with two women I didn't how raise my hands just they were just talking pure <laughs> shit they were drunk they were had two friends from London yeah. one had a man bag on the girl was talking shit yeah. I told her to fuck off she attacked me I threw my drink and I try to leave three occasions and she had to I put it on my Instagram the videos there I was saying really? that, but it was me who was the fuck it was me who was the woman beater they were pulling hair never had a woman in my life Yeah. but that I thought to myself man I did, I did think about it after that I thought I should have fucking knocked her out <laughs> I feel as if yeah. if a woman hits a man for no reason a lot of women antag antagonise men yeah. we've got to be honest mm -hmm. you see it out drunken nights you see a lot of women attacking yeah. men I feel as if a man has a right to defend himself mm. if he can't get away peacefully yeah. and she keeps attacking why should a man let a woman hit him i get that but what i find is men with the right morality they end up never hitting the guys that actually have the right moral morals even though logically they know they can hit a girl back when she they don't they just let go or they leave yeah. or whatever it is the guys that have that morality where they want to hit women are just looking for their excuse so it's difficult because i know that i would be like if someone keeps hitting a guy of course he's going to hit her back but the guys that have strong that that belief system where they just don't hit women they never will they just yeah. can't they, they, nothing will push them to it but the guy who's looking for his moment and you see it sometimes with these security guards i saw a few clips go viral where a girl would be a bit mouthy any excuse to just hit that guy would have always hit whether he's been provoked or not so it's a difficult one it's yeah. a difficult one well, like I say I'll, I'll show, send you that video three <laughs> times I was attacked punched yeah. the friend was punching awful and uh, thankfully obviously the judge seen the CCTV Thank all God. charges were dropped but See, I, had a, so, I believe I had every right to fucking defend. Yeah, see, I'm so alien to drunken behaviour because yeah. I'm not around it is it literally wild like people would just hit each other Yeah, girls would just hit a guy I feel as if girls are more f fiery with their hands on a night out oh okay it definitely happens. but i always say to my clients if a woman hits you leave her why are you still married to her so many men put up with abusive women so many men will say my wife hits me and stuff i say it's no different to when a man hits a woman you have to leave a woman that throws hands even though it doesn't hurt because they're like oh it didn't hurt blah blah it's the disrespect if she can hit you she can do anything she'll be doing anything she doesn't respect you so d just don't take just don't accept a woman hitting you ever just like a woman nah, should never hit but a man. Why, why, why do a lot of women go back to abusive relationships? 
what would have happened is they would have grown up with some level of abuse. They would have grown up with either emotional or physical abuse. And as a result of that, they either have, they don't have a safe circle. They don't feel safe in somewhere else. So they actually find a sense of home in this abusive uh, relationship. And they'd rather be in uh, with an abuser that they know than start again because they'll end up choosing another abusive person. This is one of the reasons why, you know, when women block contact with kids from their fathers and they always say, oh, but he was abusive he's abusive I actually worry more because what happens is people women who attach to abusive men they just replace the abuser with another abuser they end up going to one abuser to another abuser to another abuser so the child is still in danger until the woman fixes their issues well, yeah uh, for me I would like to think I'm quite a simple man now mm -hmm. I don't relationships I kind of chop and change my mind as, as time gets on I'm yeah. thinking obviously different as I'm getting older as well but what do you think keeps a man happy mm. i would say what keeps a, a man happy is they actually require a lot more emotional investment than we think what we are taught is they just want to be attracted to you they just want you to give them sex and they just want you to give them peace and they don't even define peace they just say give them peace um but all of that is actually negated by the fact that they actually want far more emotional investment than they say a man doesn't have the luxury of going to his friends saying how he felt or going to his uh, you know uh, uh, telling people his problems so when he finds a wife that he can be himself with and she shows emotional investment she cares about what's going on with his life with his physical health with his if he's eaten if he's not she genuinely invests in him emotionally he, he's far more happy but whereas when a man cheats a lot of men think oh he just wants sex with somebody young or somebody else but usually he just wants to feel desired by somebody else he just wants to feel loved by somebody if they if you deprive them and starve them of love and attention they'll go everywhere else yeah it's such a such a weird why do women moan all the time <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I, do you know what? I, Sad, I don't even say you don't moan. I I've, I've not I been in my life. life are moany bastards, and I think fucking stop. I I handle things. Yeah, you got a fucking problem. I'll handle it. Yeah. No problem. No sweat. I'm not moaning. I'll get it done. Yeah. Women, on the other hand. I'm thinking, fuck, what are you moaning at? I think it's a combination of we value connections more than you guys do. So if our connection is not as good as it used to be or could be, it bothers us far more than it would bother you. So if we haven't had a date night, if we haven't connected for a long time, it bothers women far more than it would bother you because our, our identity is defined by our connections. And the other thing is sometimes, a lot of the time, with women, we don't actually find meaning and purpose and so much drive in work. We don't. We, we say we do, but we don't really. And when you don't engage with life and work as much you end up sweating the small things when you don't have a bigger purpose in life you sweat the small things whereas when you do have a meaning and purpose in life you're less likely to moan so i think it's just usually a lack of you know drive or lack of uh, meaning and purpose but combined with really really putting connections as too much uh, emphasis on how healthy a connection should be so we end up moaning a lot would you think lies the most male or female uh, they lie equally but differently. Women will lie by pretending. Men will lie by exaggerating. So a man might say he's got more money than he has. He might say he's slept with more women than he has. He might say he works out more than he does. He exaggerates. Women will lie by like underestimating what they do. So they might say that, oh, I would never cheat on my boyfriend. Or I would never do an OnlyFans. Or I would never when really they would if given the chance. So I just think women and men lie differently. But the one thing I would say is because men are programmed to think women are honest and men lie they are less suspicious of women they believe women instantly if she says she's doing this they tend to believe her so she gets away with lying far more than a man would and that's where men are screwing up how important do you think it is to be just with a one woman relationship or one man relationship well the thing is in everything in life how successful it is depends on your ability to reject the alternatives so if I you know want a six pack I have to reject the alternatives of alcohol sugar carbs etc in order to get that now if you want a healthy relationship you also have to confine yourself to it you have to reject the alternatives in order to find the beauty in it or to find the problems in it if you don't reject the alternatives you won't realize this person's not right for you because you're getting stimulation elsewhere or you won't realize this person is uh, 
um, bad for you because you're getting stimulation elsewhere. So I think monogamy is essential for you to have an accurate perception of what the relationship is, good or bad. But without monogamy, we dilute how good or bad the relationship is because we're getting our needs met elsewhere. And then we're holding on to people that are either wrong for us or right for us, but not knowing. So I think it's essential to be monogamous. I think you need it in order to get an accurate perception of what's going on. How does that go against being Muslim? Because you can have four wives. You can have four wives. And you know, as I get older, I kind of understand it a little bit more because I do see how after children, women physically can't commit to the man the way they used to. They literally can't physically commit. Uh, in the religiously, you're supposed to really only do it if there's this need. Like say, for example, if somebody is widowed or somebody really needs an extra husband, can't find a man or is barren or something like that. Um, so there's room for it. I just personally, I don't know. I have haven't been I, I i can't control my jealousy enough but if i could control my jealousy i think i would like the idea of just being like oh, go, go, go do your thing for a couple of days get out of my face but unfortunately i'm jealous why is what is jealousy if i was to see so if i met a girl <clears throat> and she's all her stuff's on instagram yeah. she's fucking sexy i want to mm. date her but then after a couple of months i think right okay listen i can't really handle those photos because i'm jealous yeah i'm straight up i don't yeah, like I'm it i feel jealous. as if they're mine Mm -hmm. They could be controlling, possessive, whatever it is, yeah. but that's who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm yours, you're mine, and I just feel as if, why do we try and change people when we get them? That's something that I try and do. Mm -hmm. I try and think, okay, they can be fine, but everybody's already on their path, and nobody changes unless they want no. to change, but I feel as if I can change the world, and why do we try and go... I met you like that, but yeah, I don't like it now. So why does that come it into play? It sometimes happens usually when, you know, when you're growing up, um, you uh, weren't, you kind of either had to earn your parents' love or your parents used to try and change you, one or the other. You had to kind of be something in order for them to accept you or they were constantly telling you off, telling you, telling you, telling you off, telling you off. So what ends up happening is you don't select compatible, you select challenges. So you ch take somebody that you can mold and create into a loving relationship because that's what you were modeled as a child. You learn as a child that you alone are not loved and accepted and mom doesn't love you just for you so you have to earn it and you also know that you're always being told off so you think that's what love looks like telling somebody off teaching them how to love you forcing them to be something different but the reality is that's not just not compatible in the real world people don't change people can, think they do but they don't can you tell a lot by some of the social media yeah you can tell a lot yeah because you tend to see a lot of men post their girlfriends mm. but a lot of girls will post bikini photos mm. Why is that? Um, you know, I think the reality is men ha have no idea what goes on in the DMs of a girl that posts a lot of bikini pictures. And they have no clue about that. And the girl will always make it out like it's just a holiday, it's just this, that and the other. But the reality is there's something going on in there that she's addicted to. There might be either a lot of attention, it might be a lot of hearts, it might be a lot of offers, depending on the beauty of the girl, of course. Uh, but there's something going on where it's beneficial to her. There's something going on in the DMs that benefits her in either a psychological, physical or financial form and she's not ready to let go of that. See, that's something I couldn't do. I couldn't be with somebody who's... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's OnlyFans, but it's mm. it's fucking up there. As, but it's as free OnlyFans. Yeah. And I just think, why? if I was going to post a bikini, wouldn't you want to charge for it? I think it makes more sense to have an OnlyFans than to just be a thought on Instagram. At least monetize it if you're going to do it. So I almost think it's weaker. I think it's worse when you just post really provocative pictures on Instagram for free. Yeah. yeah. Because I question that. You're just being controlling, but I just... I've just, I like but to think I've got... But it is controlling. I'll tell you why. Because here's the difference. When girls say you're insecure and when a guy's just like, well, I'm just having boundaries. Here's the difference. Secure men, what happens is they select wisely. They select a woman and if she's doing behavior that's not good and they can't accept, they remove themselves. What insecure men will do is select poorly and then almost shake her to be better, like keep begging her. And that's why women start to call a man insecure because you don't like a lot of me, but you can't leave me. So that makes you insecure. Whereas a secure man you don't like a lot of me you leave me so we don't call that guy insecure we call the guy that keeps blowing up our phone knowing that we're going to go out every weekend keeps shouting and screaming every time we post a bikini picture but will still be with me and still pay for dinner and all that stuff so that's the guy we call insecure the one that can't let go so uh, because girls will moan about liking other girls photos mm -hmm. following other girls yeah we hate yet, that 
they'll but yeah they'll mm-hmm. post bikini photos so that's a hypocrite that's totally hypocritical uh, i find it so bizarre that women will post bikini pictures and then get mad if their man likes a bikini picture you are contributing to the same problem that you see in your relationship you are fueling that same fire in either somebody else's relationship or your own you are creating the same men that you don't like the ones that are tapping like on your pictures you're creating that as well when you're uh, when you're posting like that so i think if a woman posts bikini pictures but then gets mad at you for liking them she's got a narcissistic element that you need to kind of see as a red flag because there's a part of her that believes her emotions should be soothed but you, uh, yours shouldn't if you have got a good woman i would say try and avoid liking the pictures why do you get pissed off so much it, because it's just a visual representation of our, fi- our man finding another woman attractive which we don't need to see we just don't need to see it. But it's, what it's, if a, a woman's following men? Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if it's, I mean, the thing is, here's the thing. If you both uh, care about each other's well-being, you both should be acting in a way that's respectful. If one is strangling the other, then it's not a fair relationship and you should let go of it. But if both of you care about each other's well-being, a conversation could be had where, I don't like you posting that. Okay, babe, I don't like you liking those things. Okay, let's compromise. But when it's just like one or the other and this and the other, then you guys aren't concerned about each other's well-being. So is it going to really work in the long run? Yeah, it's bad. Do you think we can look into all that shit too much without actually just getting on with it and living? I think so, but I just think in this day and age where women are already so insecure, uh, if you can avoid the insecurity, why not? I know, and people will say, oh, you're pandering to their insecurities. But it, the reality is, it's just, we've never had to deal with this in the past. Year, centuries and centuries and centuries, women weren't competing with the world. They weren't seeing visual representations of the most beautiful girls in the world and your partner's getting act to access them. So now we've got a level of insecurity that we're not prepared for. Mm. From my own experience, I feel as if sometimes you could be too nice to some people. Mm. I feel as if, especially women, what I've realised... I see a lot of these men talking about alpha and girls, and I think you're still a fucking virgin. Mm-hmm. I see a lot of these men talking yeah, shit. Sure. The they ain't sells, fucking got yeah, it, but it sells it. because it gets clipped. But yeah. I ain't fucking daft. I've lived the life. Yeah. I've understand that, and I don't want to bullshit. But I see a lot of people, and I think stop talking shit. Yeah. You're still definitely a virgin. You, yeah. you don't know, <laughs> but I feel as if in my own experience, I always felt as if the nicer I was to a girl, the more they would try and fucking push the limit and I felt as if the same treat them keen treat them mean keep them keen I, I don't like it now but mm. part of it you tend to get a lot more love when you actually well, pretend you don't care what me- is that but that's men and women is that true then yeah, it's, it's an element of truth to it and this is with women as well what they'll find is when they are just the homemaker sat at home looking after their kids he still wants to be out in the club chasing an Instagram girl so it works both ways it's not just a case of like men and all women but what I would say is not so much about being too nice it's about being too weak there's a difference when you're a weak man or woman what happens is so you have a set of boundaries but you don't have the strength to walk away and that's when you uh, you see it as being too nice what being nice actually should look like is these are my boundaries you are most welcome to love me and be in my relationship and everything like that but if you cross them too far too many times and i've explained it to you times i can walk away what too nice looks like is this is what i want you to do but you keep breaking it again and again and again and i'm going to stay with you then they feel abused but really it's because you abandoned your own your own kind of standards Stockholm syndrome mm. where people stay in abusive relationships and like I say it's not all male it's it's both male and female mm. but also in abusive relationships I've seen some men oh, be tortured by girls who tortured. are fucking their friends and yet the soft cunts go back yeah and, and who I think you fucking cheating love. on them stopping them from seeing the kids everything they, yeah how is that though when people grow a connection with that abusive state mm. male and female to keep going back for more and feel as if they'll change like how hard you must see that being a psychologist yeah. i don't like the word weak but they are weak as well when yeah. you don't know the circumstances of what their upbringing and yeah. what they've been through their mum and dad how they were raised mm. but why do you think a lot of people actually stay in these relationships where they can't find the strength to go because what happens is when you're in an abusive relationship is that person really works slowly uh, and effectively at lowering your self-esteem they will make you feel low 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 then what happens is you as a person who's being abused will feel like the only way to regain your self-esteem is if you get their approval even if the whole world tells you you're beautiful but your husband keeps telling you you're ugly only time you feel good is when your husband says it or if you're a man and you uh, go out in the real world and everybody you know says how 
much you're, how handsome you're, how charismatic, but your wife puts you down, you'll only feel good until she says it because she's been responsible for the low self-esteem. So what happens is you crave that person's validation the most. When you let go of the validation coming from that person and replace it with validation coming from healthy people, you'll be able to let go of that attachment. What do you think women are most attractive to in a man? Well, whatever they are used to, yeah? So what happens is women that were, who like abusive, toxic men grew up with something like that. There was some chaos, there was some brokenness. What happens is she can't help but be attracted to the man that will abuse her. Now, another girl who is treated well will be attracted to somebody who is kind to her, relatively nice to her. So it will be whatever they're used to is what they're attracted to. What do you think about masculinity? We hear uh, about all that shit now, but I feel as if it's important. I feel as if men should be masculine. I feel as if I, I, you've yeah. got to have a set of balls I, on you. I feel like it's non-existent anymore. Why? Pornography. I would honestly say it boils down to pornography. Men are becoming so weak because they idolize sex. They put sex on a pedestal. And the quickest and easiest way to weaken a man is sex. And it's the dumbest thing on the planet to invest in women who don't care about you. And all of these OnlyFans girls, all of these pornography porn sites, all these webcam girls, they're there to manipulate you. So the reason why men have lost all their masculinity is that they put looks and appearance on a pedestal. And and if a woman looks like the a woman that he likes, he will drop all of his boundaries and standards just to get her attention. And she manipulates you. Manip and if you're a man who can get manipulated by a pretty girl, you are the weakest man in the world. You're the weakest. Whereas if you're a man who can stand strong with a beautiful girl, you're the strongest. So I think the war because men are becoming so weak to beauty and so saturated by sex and stuff, that's why we've got no masculinity left. Because they say now if a girl sleeps with more than five men or, or five men, our chances of a happy relationship go down from 90% to like 20, less than 20%. Mm, yeah. What do you think of sexual energy exchange? Do you know much about it? I don't know as much as I probably should, but I don't believe you can allow people to enter your body or your home or your soul without them leaving an, uh, a psychological footprint. So I don't see how it wouldn't have an impact. I do think it definitely has an impact. Have you looked into it? Yeah. What is the reason? Soul time. Like so they say when you sleep with a girl, you're connected, but what is, you're also taking the whole, her trauma, mm. not just from her, but the people that's also slept with her also. Mm. So it's, a lot of people feel after sex, they can be drained, they're fucked up, and they feel a bit confused mm. because you're absorbing all that energy, right. unwanted energy. It's just, it's deep and it's dark. And but it, does that work both ways when you sleep with a man that's been promiscuous? Ways, like, yeah. Yeah, because here's the, the thing that I find difficult about the podcast scene is they talk a lot about a woman's body count, but it's no different when when a man is. Is I think a man needs to be more careful about his body count than women now more than ever because he has no say on abortions. Whether uh, if I'm a man sleeping around recklessly with a bunch of hoes or whatever it is, and uh, she decides she wants to keep it, I have no say zero whether I want it or not. You're trapped. So I think that men have to practice far more sexual exclusivity because they've got more to lose now it's so important but then you look at date but nobody works in relationships because you've got dating apps you've yeah. got social media yeah, and what cool. happens is the dating apps are there for a reason they're not trying to get happy marriages and no, relationships or else they go out of business yeah. same as the phar so pharmaceutical industry they're not there to create cures they're creating yeah. customers so yeah. everything's there to dilute and I'm... fuck up your mind where you, you see things and but what do you think the solution could be I think you've got to go within. I think everything from birth has got to change. Mm. I've been speaking about this recently. Girls are giving birth on their back. They're giving mm. birth on their artificial lights. They're coming out drugged up, the kids. Mm. They're cutting the umbilical cord, which is so important for stem cells, nutrients, mm, yeah. skin to skin as well. They're taking their baby off, they're yeah. wrapping around and putting them in like a little cot. Skin to skin, babies are still feel connected. Yeah. The, the umbilical cord is so important. They're cutting the umbilical cord and they're selling it to private companies for thousands of dollars or thousands of pounds and they're using it mm. the umbilical cord is so important to mm. getting your full nutrition and, and your blood and, and yeah. it's, it's i forget what the other thing's called not the umbilical cord but the placenta placenta yeah. it's all so important that mm. people are so uneducated so 
as soon as we are born, we're given a name, we're given a religion, we're given a football team to support. We're just labelled, labelled, labelled. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about skin colours. I don't give a fuck what country you're from. Mm -hmm. If you're a good person, you're a good person. Mm -hmm. If you're a wanker, you're a wanker. But people need to understand everything's backwards. Mm -hmm. now, you're raised Muslim, so mm -hmm. you've got that strong belief as well. Mm -hmm. For me, I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. I've got fucking Jesus tattooed mm -hmm. on my back. I don't even uh. know. It could be anybody. <laughs> I've just got a random fucking oh. man tattooed on my back. But at that time, it served me. Yeah. It got me through life. It got me through my dark days. Yeah. Yeah. But now I see the world as, well, wait a minute. There's so many different gods and religion. Who's right? Mm. You've been raised that way. So yeah. that's in your psyche. Yeah, it's in my, but where I found what was right is what sets well with my soul, what made me feel like I'm living a, more, a better life. And when I looked at the rules of other, I like rules. Yeah, rules are good for me. I like to, even if I don't follow them, I like to know why they're there. And I couldn't find like a, a religion that also prohibited alcohol. And that was a big one for me because when I was growing up and even now, everybody is that's in a reckless situation I could almost always trace it back to alcohol whether it's like drunk driving whether it's uh, children being born or aborted whether it's like you know just murders even everything it, there was an element of alcohol and I, what made me think that I want to follow my religion is I can't understand a God overseeing the impact of alcohol and not forbidding it I can't understand a religion that would allow and permit alcohol because to me it's the devil's juice but how do we know the gods are real if we've never seen them people can say they feel them but yep. books have been written thousands of years ago mm. how do we know they're not all full of shit but just like how you don't see atoms and skin cells but you see the outcome is a human body so there must mm -hmm. be something just like I don't see God but the outcome of creation and the outcome of his regulations and rules are healthy so that's why I just think there must be a creator yeah I get that listen I've got mm -hmm. friends I've got Muslim brothers who I love to bits. They're crazy bastards. Yeah. Fucking crazy. I'm not going to do shit. Yeah. I've got people who've turned to Christ, homeless men yeah. who've changed their life and mm. now they help others and they've got a belief Amazing. in. I just don't like the fact of it all people trying to force their opinions and say what this is the way. What do you hate about religion? What, what, I don't hate religion. What if you were to question something about religion? I question everything. What is it that is a, a, a thing that you haven't quite understood about religion? Well, there's over 5,000 gods, so who's God's right? Well, wouldn't you say whoever's manual leads to the best outcome in terms of society? Or what about if we all believe we're God? Mm -hmm. Everybody's God? Yeah. Who what, says who's God and who's not? Well, I would say, like, like let's say, for example, there's hundreds of presidents okay. in the world, but the president that is, I would imagine, is the best whose society is running the best. Now, just like there's hundreds of gods, but whichever manual is leading to the most productive and healthy society psychologically and crime rates-wise and stuff, that's the one I would imagine is... But then again, if you look at politics, we can go down the route, who's behind the politicians, mm -hmm. who's behind the presidents, mm -hmm. who's pulling the strings? Yeah. It's not them. No, no. So you've got to question. I question everything. If... Mm -hmm. I could believe it. there's goods and pause. There's so much that there's a lot of satanic shit in religions as well. Yeah. If you go down that route, mm -hmm. there's lots who was in the Bible who got his two daughters pregnant. We don't drunk. believe that. I don't. We don't believe that happened. We believe in Lot as well, but we don't believe he did that. But again, that's your belief. <laughs> we believe that yeah. the the things about like Lot and uh, David and even Jesus, we believe the Quran was sent to rectify those yeah. things that were said. But because that's your belief, though. That's yeah, the way you've been raised. Yeah, to but see I, as that. a Christian, how do you make solace of that? The idea of Lot. Um, I just doing... think it's satanic. I think mm. the drinking blood and eating flesh, and I just think it's dark. Mm. If you there's so many books in the world that can change lives, positive, mm. negative. You could read a phrase and a paragraph from a book and take a positive. I could take a negative yeah. it's the way you see the world mm -hmm. so I like to keep my options open and go well, wait a minute you're actually doing amazing in life and I'm yeah. proud of you you believe in that you fucking go for mm -hmm. it but for me I just think well who wrote the book who wrote the Quran who wrote the Bible UK you're saying it's this person but I've never met that person yeah. I've never seen it being written so mm -hmm. I've got to question it who's created the human mind who mm -hmm. created the body mm -hmm. you've got certain beliefs but you could be wrong yeah I, 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 speak, I, I could be wrong yeah. so I always tell people just question what I'm saying yeah look at the the, the actions is I think I'm very comfortable with the idea that I could be wrong but the reality is if I'm wrong I still feel like I lived, lived a right life mm -hmm. if I'm wrong I never craved all the things that was haram anyway so for me if I get to death and I realise oh Sadi you could have done everything you wanted to you could have slept Around, you could have done this you could have done that made loads of money god isn't real i would be like well i'm glad i believed him in it anyway because i don't want to do those things mm. so for me it serves a purpose but not for everybody i don't yeah. believe everybody should have a religion or anything but for me personally all praise and me and that's god. the way it should be i feel as if everything <laughs> for me is to do with a feeling mm. 
Mm. How does that make me feel? How yeah. does it make other people feel? Can yeah. I have that effect? It can be a negative effect or a positive. Mm -hmm. I don't have all the answers, yeah. but what I can only speak through is what I'm living. Mm. And like I say, I was a Catholic. I got a Jesus tattooed on my mm. back. It tells you in the Bible you shouldn't mark your skin anyway, yeah. but yet you're getting tattoos. So you're kind of defeating the purpose. Yeah. I just feel as if, unless I see something with my own eyes, I've got to stay look at every angle mm -hmm. and if you believe in the Quran and like I say my Muslim brothers when mm -hmm. I go to their house the food is unbelievable their mums mm -hmm. are unbelievable and I love them to bits I would, yeah. they would do anything for me they're loyal they're legit I've also got people who don't support religions who I yeah. know would also die for me and yeah. do things for me like a brotherhood I just feel as if the human mind I feel as if we're all becoming so you talk about connection mm -hmm. We're becoming so disconnected. Why? Because it's divide and conquer. But say if you didn't have a religion, where would you get your sense of what is right and wrong? I believe if intuition. I didn't have... But I believe intuition can be filled with traumas. It can be filled with uh, past experiences. Whatever it is, I just feel like intuition is subjective. If you didn't have religion, I believe that you'd get your moral compass from the Daily Mail and you'd get it from society. You'd get it from media. I don't trust getting my moral compass from these sources. But why do, how do you know that religion's not been given by the media as well because it has that. universal value who it's, says well it, just the fact that whatever it forbids and encourages has and has always worked throughout society it forbids certain behaviors and encourages others and they if you look at the 10 commandments it would pretty much work everywhere if people followed them correctly not if people fuck them up but if people follow it correctly now if you leave it to social society and their morals and compasses i can't i i, I even the last 10 years i've seen such a switch in uk culture of what is right and wrong that i just think i don't want these fragile beliefs of course but yeah. again not everybody gets the belief from tv where do they get it from though I, believe, I don't know where i would get my morals if i didn't have god i would have no idea where to start i believe everybody knows right from wrong How? i believe you put different kids from different but religions even, as no. a baby and i believe they would know i think that's, but that's called conditioning yeah, that's but, called programming but wouldn't a hundred years ago people would think gay marriage is wrong and now everybody thinks it's right so i don't think there's but not everybody instinct. thinks it's right but we're encouraged to think it's right. Yeah, but that's that's yeah. propaganda. That's programming for it's television. It's lying to mm. make you believe. But even a hundred years ago, we would think having a black slave was okay, and now we think it's wrong. Or we would think that in Julius Caesar's time, we can just throw a tiger into a, 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 a fight a slave and watch it for entertainment. Nothing's changed for that. Uh, so I just think that if we leave it to society, human nature is so chaotic. What it thinks is right one day is it will think it's wrong the next. Human nature yeah. is designed to be chaotic. Again, that's that's why God but then is if needed. you see a birth, if you see a baby at birth, they're not chaotic. Oh, they're, they're incredible. But you talk about born, a child, you yeah. talk about a kid, one, two, they smile three to four hundred times a day. Yeah, by and the they know morality. By the time you're 18, you smile less than 10. Mm. So that tells me that the system's broke. It's nothing mm. to do with religion. It's mm. a system from birth to schooling to, to try to work and, and pressure of try to survive. Everything's pressure mm -hmm. and everything. everybody looks for guidance. You look for guidance through yeah, God. God, okay, mm. we get it. But everybody's got different guidances. Everybody, mm. there's people who don't follow religion. I can guarantee that will be happier than me and you. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm not saying religion makes happiness. Yeah, but that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, but it definitely makes order. Yeah. And for me, order is the goal, not necessarily happiness. I can't control happiness. Your life is suffering in so many different ways. But I know how to respond to suffering through the use of God. But I wouldn't know how to respond to suffering if I didn't have God. I don't know what I would do if I lost a parent. I, and I know you've gone through this, and I'm so sorry. Yeah, 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 and so sorry to say this, but I just don't know what I would do if I didn't have God. If I didn't have God and I lost a parent, like I, I still don't know what I would do. But if I didn't do it as a child, I would have to numb the pain somehow. I would have have to go to alcohol I'd have to go to women I'd have to do something I can't live with the pain of losing a parent personally I'm too weak and so if I didn't have God I don't know what I would do if I lost a parent or lost a child God forbid there's people out there that lose a child and I just think if I didn't have God the vices I would indulge in to get rid of the pain and numb the pain I would self-destruct yeah but you can't think that way because what happens is there's people who go through more through more traumatic events than yeah. me and you that still get on with it. The bottom line is, it? I feel as them. if in life, we should be getting taught about death. Mm. It's life. Yeah. It's a circle of life. With what advice would come, you give to somebody who like lost, loses a parent? Embrace their life. It happens. Mm. Sad thing is, shit happens. What yeah. you want to do, self-destruct. Yeah. What I done, and lose yourself. Mm. But then again, if I never done that, I wouldn't be on the path I am now. So I've got to thank that. Mm. 
Did you have children at the time that you... It was all at the same time. My dad okay. died just a couple of weeks before my kids were born. Okay. Right. And that kind of fucked me up because I didn't know how to handle it. Mm. But now I do. Now mm. I realise, well, wait a minute, people die. Mm. I could die. It you happens. Could but it's, it's, it it happens. One certain yeah. in life, we're all going to fucking die. Yeah. The bottom line is we just got to get on with it. Yeah. We should be taught about death. Yeah. But instead, we're all dressed in black. We're all mourning and crying. And then 10 years past, you're still fucking crying at every Christmas birthday. Yeah. Life goes on. Life goes and on. And this is the bottom line. As a man, n not many people fucking care. Let's let's get straight to the facts. Nobody really fucking cares about a man. Mm. All we can do is soldier on. Yeah. Because that's all we are conditioned to do. Listen, mm. you had a fucking bad day. Let's go into the next day. But the, the problem is we talk about weakness. Mm. Men are indulging for sex, porn, gambling, seeking drinking. Highs. Seeking highs. That's only destroying the soul. It creates more problems. A million percent. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. It and now I know problems. how life can operate with eliminating the negatives and uh, the thing is pleasure seeking and high seeking is so available so now we're getting such a plethora of men who are just in uh, inundated with problems and don't know where to start to get over it and that's where masculinity is dying if you want to be a masculine man problem solve don't indulge in highs just escape but when we look at the whole world the world, <laughs> yeah. could, the world could be an amazing place mm. and it could be such a beautiful place Eight billion people on it, yeah. as far as I'm aware. There might be less. There could mm. be more. How do we actually know? Yeah. We're only listening through radios and TVs and books about people yeah. getting their information. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine getting information? I used to watch Indian Man, Sadhguru. Okay. I liked him. It made sense with a lot of things. And then he started promoting the fucking vaccine and I thought, fuck him. Yeah, it made me hate people. Whoever promoted yeah. the vaccine, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't. But then again, them. I always think they could be right as well. Mm -hmm. But again, intuition, the cleaner I'm becoming in life, yeah. the more I'm in tune I'm becoming and try to understand. What do you think, a, who, who, what do you think created the human? Why do you think outside we're of here? God, outside of God. Yeah, but why do you think we're here? Well, for um, Muslims, I'm going to give a very boring answer. Yeah, well, but the answer we answer. have is, is, is life is just a way, it's like a stepping ground. It's like a, it's not the final destination. You have the final destination, which is the afterlife. This is just your test where you go through human experiences, but it's just to get you through. And then after that, we have an afterlife, which is, you know, heaven and hell, which I know sounds very childish to everybody else, but I believe in it. So that's what I believe what life is. It's just one large test where you can either either really excel or you can do really badly but the, we have been given the manual on how to create, make it a productive life and it's up to you if you want to do it that way or not does that sound wild does that sound wild to people that I believe in heaven and hell no I was just <laughs> Catholic we used to say fucking prayers and primary <laughs> yeah. schools to stand with hands me too the Lord's Prayer gay songs and, <laughs> I, and then, not but, gay but it was but like that's programming yeah your schooling system's not there for you to think outside the box. Mm. Your schooling system's not there for you to be an entrepreneur and yeah. understand love and money management. So yeah. then I question, they fuckers are program me. Yeah. The brain is such a powerful tool where you can be programmed. This is it tw takes 21 days to break a habit and mm -hmm. 21 days to create a new one. Some people say 40, 50, 60. But the subconscious mind can be programmed. So for, for me to unwire that yeah. and question everything, I feel as if it keeps me so right. Would people think that you're like a conspiracy theorist? I don't give two I don't claps, care either. Yeah, I, I like what, what conspiracy theory do you kind of like? Do people always think, oh my God, you're so crazy? But you I wouldn't it. say crazy. I just question it like yeah. the earth, round, flat, the moon landings. You can go down 9 11, you can go right down the rabbit yeah. hole and talk about the fucking pedophiles who run the world. Is, you can yeah. talk about Epstein. You can talk about the satanic shit. Mm. But then again, there's a lot of beautiful things in the world. Who gives a fuck if the earth is flat around? Yeah, yeah. Who cares if the moon landings were fake? Yeah. Who cares? Antarctica, we talk about the Truman Show and we feel as if it could just be one big game. Yeah. But they talk about Antarctica. Not many humans have been over it. They talk about an ice around the world. Yeah. Again, it could be all hocus pocus. Conspiracy yeah. theorists... What, what are they doing? They're making money as well yeah. by people's mind because it mm. sounds sexy. It's yeah. appealing to think, oh, I'm, a I'm not the same as everybody else. Yeah. But you're working. Mm -hmm. You're needing money to survive. Mm -hmm. You're fucking doing the same as everybody else. Yeah. So We're all part of the system. We're all part. And yeah. I, I was doing the rallies here in London and I used to watch people and I think, fucking freedom and let's fight against the corruption of the government, this and that. There's still got to be an element of laws mm -hmm. or else it'd be a free for all. I feel mm -hmm. as if people would be fucking killing the left, right yeah. and centre. There's got to be laws. Yeah. There's got to be protection There's because people are psychotic. Laws. Yeah. But when I was doing the like the street parades and the marches, people used to stand saying freedom and I'm free. 
But yeah, they're smoking joints, they're yeah. drinking alcohol, they've got a mobile phone. Mm. I thought, I'm not coming back here because you lot are so far from free. Well, what does freedom look like to you? Freedom for me is trying to understand what humans are. Right. For me, it's trying to be as peaceful as you can be mm -hmm. and trying to be, and trying to understand everybody. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Understand, try not pass judgment, but it's mm -hmm. just difficult because we're all judgmental yeah. fuckers. But for me, freedom is to be at peace. Mm -hmm. which is difficult because we're living in a very fast-paced world. Yeah, very. Me, I think about moving into the wilderness and moving into the woods and having a log, big log house and kids and farm animals and growing my own fruit and veg. Mm -hmm. But then again, I've got the psychotic side. I want mm -hmm. to be the biggest podcast in the world. I love mm -hmm. yours. I love money as well because it mm -hmm. provides for that life. But then on yeah. the other hand, I don't want to have any yeah, of you've that. You've got a struggle between so it's a contradiction. external and internal values. And I'm not daft. I, I believe I will make the conscious decision of going well wait a minute this is what i believe this is mm. all bullshit like i said i don't feel as if i'd be on social media yeah. by the end of the year because it's an illusion mm. it's like a cortic minefield yeah everybody's craving something you're yeah. a psychologist but yet mm -hmm. should you be on social media because we use it but yet it gives us popularity it gives us chance for people to say yeah, yeah. I, I think it's so wild when i meet people who want to be famous or want to be on social I media with, but with no purpose at least you know why you're yeah. going to be podcasting and stuff some people just don't even know why they just want to be famous i can't think of anything worse i can't think of it i know it sounds ridiculous because i am on social media but if i didn't have this why the why behind what i do is educating people in a topic that i seem to be quite versed in if i didn't have that i would have no desire to what be out there for people to just talk about you compliment you fakely or uh you know cuss you out fakely as well what would be that i can't understand the motivation to want to be known other than if unless you've got purpose what is it that creates what may, what would make you want to be famous one thing i would say though about i thought my, it would heal the pain were you always a bit of the star of the show anyway. Yeah, I was always... Me too. Yeah, so I, I had a reality <laughs> show in Glasgow and I was the fan's favourite. Yeah. But I felt as if then, okay, because I always struggled with... I was always trying to people please. Mm, I'm a very guess. funny guy. When I can be... My podcasts are quite serious, but I'm, I miss the old James. Yeah. Because that James was funny. Yeah. He never get... Not get, never gave a fuck. I always... My problem is I'm very sensitive I'm a soft bastard. Yeah. But I can switch on as well when I go, okay, listen, it's on. Okay. If any man ever stepped forward, I would always step forward. I would yeah. never cover back. But I'm very soft. Yeah. I'm very, I'm such a soft guy, man. It, and I think you fucking soft cunt if people could really know because every <laughs> man portrays them. Yeah. The hard man image. Yeah. And I feel as if that's where a lot of people get mixed up because mm. you're trying to portray yourself as hard and saying, you know what, I don't like this. Yeah, I'm but that's why I love what I do because the thing is, when you're a podcast host, you still have to be somewhat prim and proper. You still have to follow yeah, some rules. Yeah, you have to be professional. Yeah. I like being on this side of it is I have, I don't have to be professional at all. I can say whatever I want and I can be as sardy as I want, which I actually never knew I could monetize being yourself. But I think you can when you are authentic, when you are just, because I was always like the queen bee before I even started in my friends or whatever it would always be like Sadie's coming and she's going to take over the room and blah, blah talk nonsense and I was always that girl that was talking the most and talking the hardest all the time and so it's a natural transition and I'm just grateful that we live in a world where you can actually make a living out of just being you it's, it's like, a beautiful what? thing but it's, it's still incredible. Wild it's because wild it's constant pressure yeah it's pressure some views out will smash 10 15 million views a month mm. so it'll go if it drops below 10 million do you take views million, personal fucking right i do i do yeah, how do, come man. you do because it feels as if i'm not good enough and then i'll get straight when back when does that keep... go when do you think that goes i don't think it ever goes it will i don't think it will uh, yeah maybe i because should because i want to be everybody's got different ways they look at success for me, it's to be a good father, mm. a good family man. And it's took me 40 years to kind of suss that out. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel as if we're all confused. We can talk yeah. a good game. Mm. But when you break it all down, I don't just... think you need to know. You've established yourself so well that does it still bother you? Like, because yeah. now I feel like, okay, it's done now. At least I can never say, oh, I tried in social media. I, I got nowhere. I got somewhere. So if it's now, I don't even look at the views. Whereas before, maybe the first couple of months, but it happened so fast for me. So I never had to really. But everything's levels. Yeah. I feel as if for me to go at the top of the game, but there's never oh, a top. I'm never looking at that bit. I'm there's always never a top. Yeah, Everything I'm not for looking. me is limitless mm. but i just know who i was then mm. five years ago the lost scared little kid who just mm. never had any purpose just felt at those stages in my life i never thought i'd make it past 30 oh wow now i'm 39 life is going amazing yeah. but 
it can still go fast right. and you keep on top of maybe it maybe because your journey was so strong like i didn't really have a journey i've always had quite a comfortable life and so therefore it's not really like as valuable but i'm sure if i had a struggle and i've been through some really dark times and to have this platform like you have it would give me more drive to just be the best but i, I think i'm just a bit lazy is it have you always had this work ethic I've always been a winner. Really? Every football team captain. I am I volunteer to be the loser. Oh, I'm I like, play, please, I, can I no, come no. last? And if I, I take <laughs> the kids to bowling, <laughs> I'm fucking them up. I'm losing. I ain't giving to. I you want to up. cry? <laughs> you fucking cry that your daddy's I, winning today. I'm not even trying. Yeah, I'm like throwing I'm, the ball and just I'm taking okay. a picture. I'm, I'm <laughs> fucking, I'm winning. Yeah, I'm the what do you think that is then? Yeah. What is that? Do you know what it is? I take no joy from winning, but some people winning, especially men with high testosterone levels, um, when you win, it's a way of dominating the hierarchy and it gives a spurge of like uh, testosterone. Literally in a man, it's biological. So winning is incredible to them. Anything that they can win in, they love it. Whereas for women, uh, we don't have that same testosterone spike from winning. Yeah, so that's I, it I means need, nothing. Like if, I, if I out go out running with my daughter and my son and it's about sprint yeah. to what I'll trip them up. Don't do it, <laughs> even with them. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. I just. <laughs> Uh -huh. I've always been a winner. Ah. I'll, I'll go and look like my friend who I'm, I'm playing at tennis at the minute, uh -huh. and I'm fucking whipping his ass day in day out. Really? And I just love it. Really? I thrive on it. I and, just... and when he text messages after it, the voice don't yeah. shut. I'm better than you. Maybe I'm missing out on life by not being competitive. I have zero I'm competitiveness. So competitive. uh, yeah. yeah. No I'm matter what it is, lose. running really? up and down the stairs or whatever it is, it's maybe game because on. I just think if I don't care about winning, it doesn't hurt if you lose. So maybe it's a protective quality. But I just can't. Remember the last time I gave a fuck about winning something? But maybe that's because in schools, <laughs> sports days, maybe you did finish last, and you got yeah. embarrassed at something where maybe. it could be. Well, it's just what? a safer thing. Safer. And just I'll, if I lose, it's not as painful. And I just, I think I just value the weirdest things in life. I don't, I don't really value much. Unfortunately, I don't have hobbies. I don't have. Everybody always asks me, "What books do you read?" What do you, I don't watch TV. I don't have hobbies. I don't read books. I can't tell you where I get any of this information from, other than I like people and I watch people and I ask people a million questions if i speak to people i ask questions so i'm learning about humans all the time that's the only thing i would say so that's why i don't really yeah. compete much it doesn't oh, bring <laughs> the, but the competitive thing. side that like i feel as if it's it's healthy but again it can it's very be, healthy for a man i just it's great for the testosterone yeah yeah and it's great for dominating a hierarchy yeah, yeah so it's a really important quality for a man to lack a competitiveness he loses his masculinity yeah yeah you so, should care like people i'm so fascinated with people like, I don't read as much books as I should, yeah, but I just I try and understand people and understand, mm -hmm. well, wait a minute. And we spoke earlier, and you asked the question, what was it you asked? Something about, what did you, what's the, what have you learned the most or something? Oh, just, yeah. Nobody's got it figured out. Yeah, nobody's got it figured out. The relationships, what job should we be doing? Yeah. What's our purpose? How much money should we be making? Everything. Because people might drink and take drugs. There was a time when I'd done that, and it made sense. Mm -hmm. I loved it. But then it, eventually you go spike up and you come crashing down. Those good nights become bad and then yeah. you're chasing it. And there's a big cost to those good nights. Sad. The next day, there's you a drink hangover. coffee? Yes, I do. Yeah. No, oh, one a day or something in the morning out of habit. And I don't even like the taste, but I do drink coffee. Do you drink coffee? No. Why have you stopped? Or why did you never? I, just another, I never ever drank it. I just felt it was as if it was another form of an addiction. Yeah, it's with a a pseudo. Kick. It doesn't actually give you much. It doesn't actually give you much, but it just looks cool to have coffee. And then you'll see people vaping and. I just think, man, what the fuck are you sucking on? <laughs> okay, well, addictions usually are there to numb something. So if you have an addiction, try and figure out the pain. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think keeps a good marriage? I think... A relationship? I think the only thing that will keep a good relationship is your partner's well-being matters. Both of you, yeah? You care about each other's well-being. I care about what's upsetting him. I care about what he's, uh, how he's feeling. And similarly, if he shows a level of care of my feelings, what will happen is we'll naturally make decisions that make each other happier. Whereas if I genuinely don't care about his well-being and he genuinely doesn't care about me, even if we are well, my well-being, what makes me feel safer or secure, if we, we don't take an interest in what each other's well-being is, we'll do behaviours that naturally stab at the relationship until it breaks down. So it's caring about each other's well-being what do you think of depression i think it is unlocked potential 
poor connections and seeking highs. And that's what, as a result, all of that comes together. And then you get, get into a chemical imbalance and it causes depression. So I think people who are not fulfilling their potential in life, maybe they're not doing what they should be doing in terms of work, what they should be doing in terms of their body, in terms of who their relationship, they're not fulfilling their potential. People who are not connecting with people around them, they're not helping, they're not giving back, they're not forming meaningful connections. And people who are just constantly numbing their pain, like either through alcohol, drugs, people, uh, like sex, whatever it is, they're going to find themselves in a chemical imbalance and have depression. But they love the idea that it's genetic and it's just in them. That's not true. It's behavioral. What do you think of the suicide rate being higher than men? Why do you think that is? Uh, because they don't have an outlet when they are feeling depressed and low. When I'm feeling depressed and low, I have hundreds of people I can tell and I can share my sorrows and then I'm okay to express it and release it. For men, they don't have that outlet and they're told that they, you can't talk to women, you can't talk to a man, you can't do this. So they lock it up inside and there's pressure on them to achieve and that combination of not being able to achieve and not being able to express leads to suicidal thoughts. If you were Prime Minister and you could make changes to make the world a better place, yeah. what changes would you I would make an equal distribution of wealth. I think that the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer creates a society of unrest. Whereas when there's equal opportunities, as in we give people the opportunity for everybody to be as successful as they want to be, rather than just making the rich get away with no taxes and the poor just suffering more and more. I think if we create a society where people are no longer in survival mode, we will have a healthier society. And I've seen it in Dubai. There's nobody in survival mode, really. You get poor workers who are not on a lot of money, but they get housing and stuff so nobody's in survival mode and when people are taken out of survival mode they can be kind but when you're play creating a society that's built on homelessness taxes you know charges for cost of living all this stuff people are in survival no one is compassionate and empathetic when they're in survival mode what do you think of the trans movement um i think it is insane that we are celebrating a mental illness and i can't believe i live in a time where we're doing that it's a mental illness if you have detached yourself from a reality if i was an anorexic and i believed i was fat because anorexics do i believed i was obese i believed it believed it believed it i wouldn't say to an anorexic go get liposuction if you believe you're fat go by that belief i would say what's hurting you for you to disconnect from your body so much let's figure out the pain now if somebody comes to me and says i believe i'm a man i will say where are you getting that from one minute you're saying being a man is a social construct and then you're saying you believe you're a man so you just believe you're a social construct why do you need to change your biology stay how you are like if you we're told gender is a myth and it's not real so why do you need to change your dick why do you need to change it if it's got nothing to do with your biology so i'd say let's get rid of the pain that caused this disconnect from your body let's focus on that first let's get back in, in touch with reality and learn self-acceptance and auth authenticity and then figure out what's wrong but why would i just change your body that's like me saying i'm so ugly and somebody saying to me well just get plastic surgery it's not going to fix the low self esteem steam behind it it's fucking scares me what do you think about the trans if you believe you're someone else trapped in a body then good on you i'll support you but as soon as you start bringing it around kids as soon as you start bringing See, different that's the part that scares and me. different genders yeah i'm going to stand all day long i'm not teaching my kids that so i don't need some fucking teacher jumping about in a fairy costume mm -hmm. teaching my kids if listen the majority of sexual crimes are from straight men mm. The majority, of yeah. the majority of pedophiles are oh, straight. white straight men probably yeah. I, I don't know for yeah, the colour but, but I would imagine yeah <laughs> but the thing is they're not they're very good at keeping it under the radar mm -hmm. and grooming mm -hmm. the trans side of things and bringing it into schools and the drag queens reading story times and for me that's thrown it in my face mm. any, any pedophile I'd, I'd love to I believe they should be killed I believe mm, they should yeah. be put straight to fucking hell we should be a bullet in the head you're done that's yeah. the only way to protect kids yeah but the trans thing and nurseries and primary yeah, schools true. i feel as if it's pedophilia i feel as if they're showing it in their face why should some hairy ass man and a thong. A, a thong on and yeah. jumping about and a, and why would he want to do I that i just feel as if how can but you do that in front of me and expect me to be yeah. okay with that how the fuck can you be jumping about in a bumblebee outfit and want to take a piss next to my daughter because you identify something yeah. i don't care who you are that ain't going to happen and not in my watch and it's mm. not to be tough but i've got fucking morals i've mm. got wait a minute that that doesn't sit right because you're 
that for me is just creepiness yeah. because there's plenty of trans people out there who just live their life mm. who raise a great family who are good parents yeah. but they don't throw it in your face and say this is my movement mm. I believe this because is it 0.0, .0 Five percent of people are trans. Yeah, it's hardly anybody. Why are we no. hearing about it so much? I I agree, but for me, I actually think it's earlier than that. I genuinely think if I met somebody who identified completely opposite to who they are, that's a mental health concern. I would be worried for them. I wouldn't think, okay, go do your thing, because we know that rates of suicide amongst trans people is um I think it's around nineteen times higher than people yeah. who are not. So there's an underlying depression that we have to look into, and if that's seen as bigoted, so be it. But anybody from the the mental health profession would say a complete detachment to who you are is a, 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 you're no longer connecting with reality and having that being celebrated is dangerous especially for children it scares me yeah it scares me and the, the weird thing is if you speak to children nowadays they don't see anything wrong with it they can't see how like a boy wearing makeup just uh, 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 who's transitioning they don't see anything wrong with it so the problem with that is they're not seeing something wrong with something that is actually a deep psychological or emotional concern but that's it being normalized yeah for the next generation yeah. and for me it's it's a fucking abomination yeah. like you put 10 men on an island with a hundred women, you're going to, you're, 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 you're good. Yeah. <laughs> put fucking 10 trans men on an island with a hundred women, they're going extinct. And it's just, if you're 18 plus, keep the, the drag queen stuff 18 plus, keep the trans stuff. Listen, if a kid's 14, 15, if they want to bring any sentences and talk about, listen, mm. but people are different, people are gay, nobody cares. It's yeah. 2023, listen, I know no, a lot of people who still, I don't give a fuck personally. Mm. No, and I don't want to be one of these guys who shoots down trans and say, oh, but I've got trans friends. I have got trans friends that have been on the show and I guarantee they're fucking nutcases. Yeah. I, I haven't got trans friends, but I don't I don't associate with anybody who's detached from reality, whether you're trans or not. I could meet, I even have friends that I think are a bit delusional. I'll distance myself. Anybody who's not in touch with the reality in themselves I see them I, I can't connect with them after a while mm -hmm. because they're, they're disconnected and they're not there's a depression there so unless they're seeking help from it it's not a discriminatory thing but if you think it is which I'm sure a lot of people will see it as I would say that I would argue if throughout history and throughout all the other cultures in the world if you go to a tribe in Africa and if you go to a village in Kashmir where I'm from they've never heard of this movement they've never heard of that so for you to suggest that it's human it's natural and it's a, a human right I, does that mean my culture and everybody from my culture color is wrong everybody in my culture is wrong everybody in the tribes are wrong so i think if you're going to discriminate against the people who see something wrong in it you're actually discriminating against most of the world and it's almost like a uh, why it's a it's a privilege to think that we can just you know change our gender at the snap of a finger where, where are we getting this from what do you think of andrew Tate? I like Andrew. Yeah, I like Andrew. We speak quite regularly and stuff. And, uh, I, you know, we we agree. We say that we agree on about 80% or 70% of things. We agree on a lot of things. I disagree on a few things. And when we disagree, we can converse like adults and kind of find a logical conclusion. But it's nothing personal. And just because somebody has a different opinion doesn't mean they're a bad person in certain things. So I really enjoy um, watching his content and stuff. What do you think about Andrew? Yeah, listen, I, I like the guy. I've had yeah. his back. Yeah before they get charged when they get charged mm -hmm. and now I've always had his back I had him on a podcast very out there yeah. but the thing before the podcast that we done he says he was going to have some fun yeah. he knows how to push buttons yeah. he wasn't as big and I don't think he realised he would have got as big obviously a lot of the footage can come back and bite you in the ass yeah. but he does say a lot of stuff to get bites to yeah. get clicks he knows exactly what he was doing yeah he knows the game I ain't a judge or a jury which I always say but I can only and he's got a good presence and he seems to have a good a lot, energy a lot of charisma yeah, yeah he you owns a room he and owns a room see, yeah and you can see why girls would fall for that yeah he's got a lot of charisma he's got a lot of charm and he owns a room but he's still polite and kind so I don't see what the big issue is but then here's the thing I, I have controversial issues with that uh, controversial opinions and I didn't realise so I think I didn't realise that truth was so offensive and a lot of things that he says are true uh, some of the things I disagree with but doesn't mean it's not true it's just I disagree yeah, same, same yeah. as you. Know, I agree with a lot of stuff, same yeah. as Andrew. There's, it doesn't mean I just he's don't, wrong. I feel, he's with the, I feel as if all these men and having multiple women, I just don't see, I don't care what any religion says from my own belief, I just don't see anything positive I that don't. would ever come from that. Yeah. I just, from my own experience and having multiple women, and I just, it was so damaging to the mind. Yeah, it's damaging to everybody and involved. And the soul, and I just felt as if I was, wasn't in a good place. And yeah. that I'm only speaking from experience. I feel as if, listen, like you say, whoever's beliefs, it could be 
that could be the thing. Yeah. Go and have four wives. Yeah. It could be. Could be a thing. But for me, I just know how hard that is yeah. to fucking please one. So <laughs> I know. I don't I don't envy it. But I just think, yeah, I think there's certain things I disagree with, but it doesn't mean just because you could disagree wrong. with someone, yeah. they're awful. It's yeah. just an opinion. Opinion doesn't you should you shouldn't as a human over identify with your opinions. If your opinion means so much to you, you don't have enough going on in your life. So if someone disagrees with you, it doesn't mean you have to hate them. Why do you think alcohol is so glorified? Uh, it's a form of escapism. And now that we're living lives that are more and more uh, empty and vacuous, we want to escape from it and find something to enjoy because we're not actually fulfilling our meaning and purpose in life anymore. So alcohol provides a perfect escapism. And the other thing is because most people are suppressing themselves, especially I'm noticing in English culture, because there's such a, I've got to, can't say anything, feminists are going to get upset, can't say anything, gay people are going to get upset, can't say anything, trans people. So they're suppressing themselves so, so much all the time that alcohol is the only time that they can be themselves sometimes. So it's the only time they have a release. And I think that's why they depend on it so much. And I think this particular why English culture depend on it so much. They're not allowed to be themselves anymore. It's scared because I used to drink for confidence. Yeah. Now I can walk into a room and I own the fucking room. Yeah. I'm not, and you see, I always disappear. We call it a smoke bomb. And yeah. I was at a wedding, my friend's wedding, who mm. I've been friends with from 20 years. Yeah. Uh, mad bastard. And I stayed for three hours and then I just disappear. Yeah, that's because what our, not drinking I, does. I feel the, yeah, um, the everything changes. People become more touchy. Yeah, I leave. Yeah. I'm, I'm, just, leave. I'm just gone. I'm not yeah. really bad. I'm just. You show your face. You yeah. say hi, but then you leave, and you leave at a respectable hour. Yeah, yeah. That's what I like about not drinking. If somebody comes to you depressed, yeah, suicidal, hating life. What's your go-to advice for them? Firstly, do I you say, ask them? Yeah. Do they take drink or drugs first? Do you? I ask them, "What do you value?" And they'll and usually when people are depressed, they're valuing the wrong things. They might say, "I don't feel pretty anymore. I don't have any girls. I don't have any guys. I don't have. I am. Um, I'm not making enough money." And so I I first assess their values, and when we value junk. things, when we value junk, we're always going to feel depressed because we think we want more junk and it's not fulfilling. So I firstly look at their values and then I ask them to assess their connections with people. Have they got good connections with people? Are they being authentic? Are they kind people? Are, are they giving back? I look at their connection with people. And the final thing is I look at their uh, potential and are they fulfilling their potential? Or are they making excuses? Are they constantly saying, I can't do this because of that? I can't get the weight I want because of that. I'm not doing this. And then I strip those three things. It's their values their connections and their potential and then that's how I try and get rid of the depression without any medication how do you separate from being a psychologist to being a family member and mm. a, a, no. a friend well, because I do yeah. interviews and yeah. some of them are dark yeah and I think man that was fucking heavy uh, sometimes I don't really I've done a Reiki course which is like healing energy but then I don't really do it on myself but I just mm. I struggle to separate yeah both I feel well, as if this is me 24-7. I'm quite fucking intense, yeah. man. And <laughs> and I miss that. When I talk about I miss the old James, because that James used to laugh. Everything yeah. was a laugh. And I miss that. I it? just feel as if I became more serious. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm hearing more serious stories, but uh, can or you separate, are we just growing up? Can or you separate the psychologist? No, to the I really can Yeah, what happens is I don't have much social battery left. So what happens is I have very, very limited uh, social skills at the end of the day. I only want like the people I genuinely love and can be myself even my friends my friendships are suffering because I don't have the ability to connect anymore and they all always message me I miss you I haven't seen you in so long this that and the other and instead of seeing it as oh that's nice I'm like oh stop overwhelming me and I almost get like mean rather than uh, 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 grateful so I'm feeling like I'm running out of social battery and particularly when I meet people in public what will happen is when I meet people in public most of the time they're just very quick and like nice and lovely and say oh we like blah blah but sometimes they'll be like oh I'm getting married in the summer and this is this happening this is happening and I, I i can't have that conversation I, my brain is fried <laughs> when was the last time you cried uh last time i would have cried would have been uh probably a couple of weeks ago i haven't seen my nephew in a while and i every t anything to do with him i get a bit emotional which is why i wonder how men who've been separated from their kids i don't know how they do it because if i don't see him for a while i get really upset so i don't know how men do that by the way all men, women. Men are yeah. very good at switching off, I Yeah, think, I guess. And blocking When was the last time you cried? <laughs> I think a couple of days ago. Music makes I me cry. I cry, yeah. So it does. I listen to music. Sometimes I think about dying. 
and how people react at my funeral. I want everybody sad. <laughs> I go fuck it. I, I think actually, we, I, think weird I, shit. I don't think people will be up to. I think people will come just to make sure I'm dead. I literally <laughs> can't imagine anybody uh, reacting that badly, except for my dad. I think the rest of them will be like, you know what? It's probably just probably needs to. It'd be safer for her to just get to. What is that thinking about your funeral? Do you ever think that? Think about death? Uh, it is a. Uh, it's a it's a is tiny a symptom of, of depression. Is that? Yeah. Well, I must have been depressed because I listened yeah. to a song and I thought I could play that at my funeral. Yeah. And then I started visualising would people cry? Well. I hope so. <laughs> like, I talk about people living their life and getting on. I want everybody fucking destroyed. Well, what happens with the tiny symptom of depression is they see the future as bleak. So they'll go to, when they think about the future, they'll talk about their funeral or their cancer or something like that rather than like, you know, the other things. But this is the power of now. Yeah. Living in the present moment. Yeah. Us listening to each other's voice, we can't multitask. Yeah. So we don't know depression if you're in the moment. Yeah. A lot of depression stems from people living in the past or focusing too much in the future. What do you think of words? Because I swear a lot and sometimes I like to joke around, but words are so powerful. What do you think of you are what you speak? Uh, Well, the thing is, I am one of those people that I've got a really terrible tongue when I'm angry, just as articulate as I am in interviews. I'm just as articulate in arguments. So I can say something really mean without realizing and it won't. And you can say the meanest thing to me and I won't drop a sweat, but I can say something and it will kill somebody with just my words. I don't recognize the power of words because I'm quite immune to them. But people are super, super sensitive with words and words can destroy relationships and they can stay in people's minds forever so if you do have a powerful tongue try and use it positively I personally don't all the time I definitely get really rude and stuff but I wish I didn't do that it's a very mean trait do you find relationship harder or easier being a psychologist harder. but then overanalyzing? Harder, way harder, way, 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 way harder. Overanalyzing? Overanalyzing, predicting problems, being able to um, rationalize all your mistakes, so thinking you're right in situations where you're not right. Um, and being naive, being completely dumb is a gift. It's, it's a gift. People that are dumb and naive and don't understand anything, they get through life easier and happier. Whereas overthinking, overanalyzing, predicting problems, it's a recipe for disaster what is that always thinking you're right that's me Uh, well i don't think something unless i've done a lot of research or i really understand it so i try and only say things that i believe but it keeps you fragile when you always think you're right you don't question yourself and then you don't grow so we should always go through life with the belief i could be wrong yeah you should almost say it all the time i could be wrong i could not do yeah relationships i always feel as if I know best. Yeah, but we I'm don't. not talking about in life. Like I'm always open-minded, but yeah. in relationships, I feel I know best. Yeah, it's not bad. I do that a lot yeah, as well. It's yeah, it's bad. Up, it? Yeah, it's negative. Where do you go forward for the future? Uh, professionally or personally or where? Everything. Where do uh, I go forward? Yeah. yeah. Where do I see myself? No idea. I can't tell you. I don't even know how I got here to begin with. So I have no idea where I'll be. I'll be wherever God takes me and wherever. For as long as people want to hear it, I'll be happy to talk. When they don't want to hear it, I had a great run and I'm very grateful to everybody. Why are you so unsure about that? Because I can't understand how, why it's working. I'm just like, what is going on? I mean, I'm confused. Like, how has, how has this happened? But I'm very grateful and I didn't know that it would ever have this much of an impact. But if it is having an impact, I, I almost see it as my five minutes i always even to my parents i'll be like listen guys i don't know how long this is going to last so da, da, da. and i talk like that isn't that bad yeah it's bad so yeah. i'm not a psychologist but what i'm very good at is reading people yeah well. now you talk about being competitive you're not competitive because you're you just li- you like to lose yeah and then you're saying five minutes of fame but deep i inside, really think i'm flavor of the month one, de- yeah. yeah deep inside you want it to work it's already working yeah what is that i just think i prepare for the worst in general is that safer for you? Mm, I always prepare for the worst in general. I'm always okay with the worst case scenario. And what it does is it helps me detach from the joy and excitement for, and not get too caught up in whatever's going on. So I always prepare for worst case scenario. Maybe it's a low self-esteem thing or whatever it is, self-sabotage thing. But I'm genuinely seeing it as I'm flavor of the month. It's five minutes of fame and I'm sure I'll be like working as an Uber driver in a year or so. But what happens <laughs> if you actually think the best of it? What happens if you actually think about taking it to new heights yeah. and believing in yourself and next time you race your nephew, triple him up, yeah. win the race? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, get... if I dream big, God willing, it might be something amazing, but I just can't imagine caring enough. Yeah, all humans, see, I care too much. <laughs> I can't imagine caring enough. I care too much. Because sometimes people are like, oh, you should try and have a talk show and you should try and do this. You know? I'm like, you think I'm going to wake up at this time and invest in a, I don't even have a tripod to film my shit. So I was just like, oh God, that's a lot of work so anything that involves 
manual labor or effort, I'm I tap out. Isn't that terrible? Yeah, but whatever you're doing is working for you. Praise be to God. Yeah, and whatever you're doing is working for you, and you're not daft. Yeah. We've all got different characters. You're I, on the ball, yeah. even though you say you know what's not working, you know exactly what's fucking working. Yeah, I guess I guess the blaseness of it is working. Yeah. And the cutthroatness of it is working. So I guess the fact that there's no team, there's no one telling you what to say, what to write, what to pose, mm. the authenticity is working, and I'm very mm. grateful for that. I want people to get a lot of things out of this podcast and hopefully they go, well, just that, like I say, you can listen to a motivational speaker yeah. and it will change your life for a couple of hours. Mm. But just what advice would you have for anybody that's in that dark space right now? Mm. Male and female in their abusive relationships or struggling mentally, feel as if they can't give any more. What advice would you have for them? I would say try your best to have a vision of where you see yourself in the future and look at the behaviors you're engaging in right now. Are they making that future version of yourself more likely or less likely? If you are engaging in any kind of highs, numbness, denial, poor decision making, just stop stop those and start problem solving every wherever you find look, here's the thing in life you, you can't control pain you're going to get painful events people are going to die something's going to happen but you can control suffering suffering is just your emotional response to poor decisions have a look at all your decisions that have led to this point and chances are there's been poor decisions poor decisions poor decisions try and change those decisions into ones that will be constructive and i promise you you'll see a change in your life what is anger it is lack of perspective. And what I mean by that is you push past me on the street and I'll be like, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. But if you push past me and I realize that you're blind, straight away I change my perspective. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So perspective will take the same behavior and either make you retaliate with anger or with compassion. So when we get angry is we haven't taken perspective. We haven't tried to understand what's caused this person to feel this way. And if it's you, you can take accountability. If it's not you, you cannot make it personal and not get angry. So either way, it could be avoided if we have perspective. Do you believe people can change? No. Isn't that wild as a therapist? <laughs> I think you, I think people <laughs> can just lost half your yeah. <laughs> I think you can improve and I think you can uh, get better, but I don't think people change and nor should you want to. I think a part of good mental health is accepting the person you are, working on the things that you need to work on, but also embracing the parts of you that will always be you. What about people who cheat then? I do think that there it's a coping mechanism. And so until they fi change or find out what caused that coping mechanism, they'll always cheat. Scary that, I know. Yeah, they'll always cheat. It's their way of coping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope people get a lot from this. Like I say, it's kind of... God willing. It's <laughs> a strong conversation. It's good opinions and good yeah. beliefs on certain things. Like I say, stay open-minded. Yeah. We could be full of shit. We're all I full of shit. I could be wrong. Yeah. You could be wrong. We could be wrong. <laughs> Would you like to finish up on anything? No, just thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your platform. What's all your social medias and stuff for people to get involved yeah. and make uh, their comments? And yeah, and troll me like you always because do. Because you do one-on-one -on -one coaching yes, as well I for do anybody struggling. Thank and I like you. that. Listen, I've went to therapy and I think, nah, man, I just felt as if I couldn't take advice from somebody I feel as if I was doing better than. Yeah. They never had that vibe. They never had that frequency. Mm. And I thought, mm, you're not on it. I felt as if because they were drinking and stuff. Yeah. And I felt, I'm not doing that. Why yeah. should they be taking... It? That's okay. the way I was thinking, but yeah. I don't know if that's the control no, of nature. I can understand that. I can but I just understand. felt as if I can't really be vulnerable with you because I feel as if I could help you. Yeah. Do you struggle to take your own advice? I don't take any of mine, but yeah. I'm a mess. Why is that the same? <laughs> because, I'm very, I can change. Yeah. If somebody comes to me, I can I, change that method of thinking it's and so a heartbeat. wild because I'll be giving advice and then my partner will hear me and he'll be like, did you hear that? Did you write a note about what you just said? Psychotic yeah, bitch. it's like absolute psycho. <laughs> so the thing is, it's just, uh, I, I'm not very great at taking my own advice because I can rationalize the alternative of not taking my advice. But I'm like, yeah, but I don't need to because Da, da, da. but I, I do one-to-one -one coaching I like one-to-one -one coaching because it keeps my content current if I know what's going on in people's lives I can tell you how to fix it on my social media if I remove that element then I'll never know what's going on on the ground so I like to keep my one-to-one -one coaching I also have a Patreon where I go into more detail because I touch on lots of topics on podcasts but I go into detail in the one to in the Patreon and of course there's YouTube and Instagram and TikTok which is at Sadia Psychology legend thank you so much <laughs> conversation I'm with you nothing but the best for the future Angie I we'll have, mm -hmm. I'll have you back on we'll have a good discussion maybe have an, an R couple of people and yeah we'll get Andrew on as well I wish you nothing but the face you're a good woman man and uh, take Aww. care of yourself God bless thank you so much